It's time for the Starry Lemon Lime Friday Night Rivals Preview Show. Welcome back to the Friday Night Rivals Preview Show. We apologize for the technical difficulties, but that won't stop us from talking a little high school football. St. Teresa taking on Central A&M tonight at Milliken. Let's get right into it. St. Teresa off to an 0-2 start to the season. They are defending state champions, but 0-2 to start the season. Paul, talk to me a little bit about this St. Teresa team and what we can expect from them this year. Yeah, a lot of people say, oh my gosh, St. Teresa is 0-2. You know, what's what's wrong? The sky's falling. It's not falling. They play, the Bulldogs have played two very good teams. The team in Indiana, they lost two in week one. Uh, may win state championship very easily. And Belleville Altoff is who they played last week. Talking about Decatur St. Teresa and Belleville Altoff might win uh, state this year too in Illinois. So they played very good talent. Uh, this is a big test. You don't want to go in three. It's a rivalry game. This is a big game for St. Teresa. Yep, Adam? You know, I'm sure the, there's a lot of people talking around Decatur because St. Teresa has been 0-2 in a, probably a long, long time. But like Paul said, there's a lot of new guys. They are returning state champions. You've progressed here in two weeks. Now your younger guys have to start to step up. They start to have to play like defending state champions. So look for uh, Max Schilkowski to have a big game tonight if they're going to come out with a victory. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned it. New era for St. Teresa. New head coach Britt Miller, Mark Ramsey entering retirement after that state championship run. The former NFL lineman leading this team, but despite the difficulty to start the season, coach feels they are still in a good position to win and have already made the improvements to do so. No, it's me, right? I mean, it was, it was good to see some good football on that side of the uh, ball from them. And uh, our guys got better. You know, uh, we finished that game. Uh, we only gave up one touchdown in the last three quarters. And, you know, so we're building off those things. We're a young team right now. We do have some seniors with, with, a, with a bunch of talent. And we're just utilizing those guys as best we can. But at the same time, we need our young guys to grow up. And uh, this week's going to be a good week for it. This is a very different um, approach for St. Teresa, you know, not being in the CIC this year. Mm -hmm. um, normally, you know, we'd be kind of steamrolling some guys right now. And I don't necessarily think that that makes you better um, in all facets of the game. Now, moving over to the away team last season, Central A&M finished 6-4 and four overall and went 4-3 and three in conference play. And so far this season, they are they, excuse me, they are 1-1, one one, losing to Leroy in the first week of play and defeating Marshall 29-14 last week. Last season, when these two teams faced off, St. Teresa won 48-7. Now, with St. Teresa getting out to this 0-2 start, do you see this kind of being a problem and maybe the Raiders could have a different outcome compared to last season tonight? I definitely do because at 0-2, Two, you got to get to five games to win or to get into the playoffs. Uh, St. Teresa could be pressing a little bit. They could try some things that they haven't been used to, get out of rhythm. Uh, Central AM could definitely take advantage of that. They have the right kids. Drew Damry is a third year starting quarterback. Uh, that's what Coach Weekly needs out of his offense. It's complex but simple. You're going to see a lot of different things out of the Raiders here tonight. Yeah, the quarterback for Central AM, Drew Damry, had 286 total yards last week, threw for two touchdowns, uh, ran for another. Uh, he is a force. And it, it's a confidence factor too, right, Adam? You you played and you're 0 two. Coach Miller said they got to get a win under their belt so they get some confidence. Yeah, it's it's all about <laughs> it is it all goes back to confidence. And this is a natural rivalry. These kids see each other a lot in other sports throughout the summer. There's going to be a lot of high emotion here tonight. And I spoke with Raiders head coach Brent Weekly at practice on Thursday and asked him what he has seen from his team through two games and what his expectations are for the remainder of the season. Ooh. Still trying to piece things together uh, with our uh, with our both offensively and defensively. Uh, this week's a big challenge for us. Uh, St. Teresa has always been highly successful. They're just defending state champions. So, uh, regardless of what their record is, it doesn't matter. Uh, this has been a rivalry game since 1992, and uh, there's a lot of pride from both schools when we play this game. St. Teresa, as we mentioned in the beginning of tonight's show, they lost a core group of seniors from a year ago that helped them to that state championship. But who are some of the guys that you feel are able to make an impact in tonight's game? Uh, for, I think it starts and stops with Monty Snyder. Uh, Coach Miller talked about it. He might be the best athlete on the field. And after watching uh, their first two games, he, he's probably right. He's, an, uh, he's got a ton of athleticism. He's a big kid. He needs to have a big game and get off to a hot start, I think, here tonight to get the Bulldogs going. And running back to Karrion Jones, 5'9", 230 pounds. He is a force. We've seen him before. Absolutely. He is a, a, he's tough. He's tough. Mm -hmm. 
important. And as we mentioned many times, 0-2 slump to start the season for the Bulldogs. And despite the lack of worry across the organization, they see tonight's game against Central A&M as a must win. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, losing 18 seniors is not very easy. But um, I think the young guys are developing. I think if we can win this game, you know, get on the winning train and, um, you know, take things from there, especially next week against Tolono Unity. Um, I think if we can get the win this week and, and, you know, just start that train, you know, we'll be good. And, and hopefully it'll, it'll bring our confidence up and our morale as we go through the rest of the season. Back to Central A&M. The Raiders are returning many experienced players on both sides of the ball. They were supposed to have their entire offensive line back, but one player did t tear his labrum in July, so they are down one man there. Are there any players on either side of the ball that you guys have your eyes on for A&M? Uh, for me, I'm watching Maddox playing number two. Uh, he's 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. He's a big kid. They'll throw him the ball. He's kind of built like a tight end. He'll play some kind of a lineman type position as well. Coach Weekly is going to move him around. I think he could be key for success offensively for the Raiders. One of the things Coach Weekly talked about earlier this week was about you know this game is in the season. He said they're they're looking to find out their identity. Are they a run team or pass team, and who the leaders will be? Uh, July 2022, a year ago. Uh, there was a car crash in Assumption, tragically killed two Central A&M students, two others seriously injured. Connor Rowcliffe and Keenan Bergen died. Connor Rowcliffe, number 34, there's his helmet right there. And Heineman is a wide receiver. Week one, he got hurt, so he has not played varsity level. Hopefully he will in a couple weeks. He hurt his wrist. Connor Rowcliffe was the team's leader, uh, Coach Weekly said. It's been tough for the football players, all the students. So maybe they rally around some emotion tonight and, and pull out a victory. He said a lot of his guys are lead by example, not by voice. He's hoping maybe some of those guys find that here tonight even. And at a &M's practice on Thursday, I spoke with a handful of players about how the team is shaping up and what their expectations are not only for themselves, but the team as a whole. We're just trying to come out here and show people what we can do. And I feel like we haven't really shown a whole lot of what we can do yet. So I think big things are coming for us and the, the whole program. It gets a little hype around the game, but we try not to let it bother us too much and just go in and play our game. And before we dive into tonight's matchup, we're going to turn it over to our meteorologist, Darren Leeds, with a live look at your weather for tonight's game. Yeah, and a beautiful evening out here, Brielle, and perfect for some Friday night football. This is typically what you want to be playing in come the fall season. It is early September, and it feels like it outside. Skies cleared up very nicely here across central Illinois. We had a lot of the cloud cover earlier on, and that helped to keep temperatures a little bit cooler. Now things cleared out, and our temperatures still on the mild side at this point in time. No threat of any rain, and kids should be looking at some nice cool conditions come the third and fourth quarter. Temperatures right now here in Decatur at Milliken University, 73 degrees, a little bit cooler maybe for some of those games that are going to be happening over around Champaign and Danville later on this evening. But yes, for our Friday night rivals forecast, I've got kickoff just above that 70 degree mark. So a couple degrees cooler than what it is right now. And by that third and fourth quarter, we're going to be dropping down closer to around those mid 60s. Winds nice and calm coming in out of the north, so shouldn't play too much of a fan actor in the kicking game later on this evening. That'll do it for me here live reporting at Milliken University. Great night for some football once again. If you got some free time, come on, check it out. Thank you, Darren. Turning it back to tonight's game of the week between St. Teresa and Central AM. Let's make a few predictions for this game. I want to know all of your score predictions for tonight. So Dante, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think this I think we're gonna have a good game tonight. Um, it's you have two teams looking to win this game. St. Teresa, they're looking to overcome that 0-2 start to the season. They have a lot, they have a lot to lose tonight. You don't want to fall to that 0-3 record. But then, if you're Central A&M, you don't want to lose to St. Teresa. You know you had that history with the program. I would give a final score: St. Teresa 35, Central A&M 25. I think. I think it could be a little bit of a close game, maybe a 10-point game that could come down to that final quarter. Hopefully. I'm going 28-20 St. Teresa, um, and I wouldn't be shocked if it ends up a lot closer. Again, a few years ago it came down, I think it was a two-point game, came down to one of the final snaps before that game was decided. I think you're going to see a tight one here tonight. 
Uh, I think with the, the instability in the St. Teresa era of being 0-2, I think they're going to press a little bit, and it's going to take a while for both teams to really find a rhythm offensively. I won't give a score, a prediction of a score, but I think St. Teresa wins. I think it'll be a very close game. I think it goes down to late in the fourth quarter. I will because I've talked about it tonight and Coach talked about it. Do you see tonight as a must win? for Absolutely. Uh, St. Teresa. Looking at the schedule they have, and again, they're a, they're a non-conference team. They, they were uh, kicked out unceremoniously of the Central Illinois Conference. Uh, so they had to go out and, and find non-conference opponents. They've done that, and they've found a <laughs> heck of a schedule. Uh, it, it is maybe one of the toughest in the state of Illinois. Uh, so it, it's a must win if they plan to get to five games or five wins to get in the playoffs. Yeah, you don't want to start 0-3. You're just digging a deeper hole, and they've got to win this one. Brielle, what's your prediction? Thank you for asking. I was waiting for someone to ask me. <laughs> I have St. Teresa winning this one 35 to 20. Okay. So sort of close to mine. We got that 10 to 15 range. Yeah. I, I agree. I think it's just gonna I think it's gonna be a closer game. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a closer game than a lot of people think. I mean, getting off to an own to start, definitely not ideal. Um, but many other great games across the central Illinois area this evening. So let's take a look at a few of those important matchups. And the first one we can touch on is Jacksonville at SHG, or excuse me, SHG at Jacksonville. So what are our thoughts on this game? Yep. Uh, you know, Jacksonville squeaks out a, a big win against MacArthur last weekend. May or may not have won if you look at the replays. That's what everybody was talking about this week. Uh, SHG still trying to figure themselves out. Again, like St. Teresa, defending state champion that lost a lot of players from that team, I think SHG wins a close one. Incredibly, Jacksonville has not beaten SHG since 2010. It's been 13 years. They've had some really good games. It's been a good rivalry. Yep. SHG has certainly had the upper hand, the better hand. Uh, SHG will have to stop. Cameron Mitchell seems like we've been calling his yeah. name the running back for Jacksonville forever. forever. He's a tough one. <laughs> and like you said, Decatur MacArthur uh, just you know lost to Jacksonville last week. So it'll be an interesting game. I think SHG might pull this one out. And what about Rochester at MacArthur? What do you see from that game? You know, we're, they're actually right down the road, so if anybody's driving over to that game, uh, they're at Stephen Decatur. There's a lot of construction still going on at, at MacArthur. Um, uh, MacArthur still got a lot of bad feelings, I think, over last weekend, feeling like they, they missed one there in Jacksonville. I, I don't think they have what it takes to stop Rochester. I am all the way in on the Rochester train. Uh, they've looked unbelievable two weeks in a row. To hold Springfield high to just 15 yards offensively is uh, astounding to do to any Central State 18. Yeah, the Generals ground game is really, really good. Myson Johnson Cook and Cameron France rushed for more than 300 yards a week ago in a losing effort. But Rochester is Rochester, like you said, which yes. is bad news for the rest of Central State 8. You mentioned the 15 yards. That's 45 feet. That's all the, <laughs> all the, all the yardage that they got. Springfield High got against Rochester. You know what? We're talking about Rochester's defense. They've been excellent. They played great the first two games. Can you I do it in meters? No. <laughs> I, I like the quick math there. Thank you. I wanted to jump in and mention Rochester was one of my picks to win a state championship this year. I think they are top to bottom, yeah. one of the best teams in the central Illinois area, if not across the whole entire state. When, when you put 40 on Peoria High School, who was – came into the season a second ranked team in 5A and I think it will be a team that does play deep into the playoffs and, and you you put a running clock on a team like that that kind of sends a message that uh, I would start making reservations in Bloomington on Thanksgiving weekend. So then sticking with some other games in Central Illinois, how about the small school showdown um, between Athens and Olympia? It might take the record for the fastest game played because I'll put the over-under on about eight passes thrown. <laughs> uh, both teams love to run the football. We did that game last year. It, it'll be a fight in a phone booth. Uh, I think Athens wins a tight one up in Olympia. Yeah, uh, Athens, their ground game is back. They are solid. They, they, they don't throw the ball. They don't need to. Their ground game is excellent. I think they win a close one. So, Dante, now you're from Champaign, so you're familiar with the east side. Are there any games over there that you have your eye on for tonight? Yeah, I'm excited to see Tuscola take on a well-established Farmington team that's off to a 2-0 and start this year. They, they've looked good from everything I've heard. Tuscola is a team I'm excited about. They have some size. Jordan Quinn at quarterback, he's 6'3", and he's, he's not afraid to run. I mean, when you're that tall, sometimes you see kind of in the high school level the pocket passers, but he's somebody who can bulldoze you at the quarterback position. We're going to turn it over to the national anthem here at the field.
only 15 minutes until the start of this matchup between St. Teresa and Central A&M. Stick with us here on the Starry Lemon Lime Friday Night Rivals preview show. We'll be right back. Success isn't always defined by your star players. Sometimes that success is directly contributed by the unsung heroes of the team. And while we love to highlight the players in tonight's game, we also have the opportunity to spotlight coaches as well. Dante, who are your un unsung heroes tonight? Yeah, when I talk to Bold Central A&M coach Weekly as well as Coach Miller for St. Teresa, he continued to rave about the dedication that these coaches put in on a weekly basis. Both teams had coaches that have been there uh, on the offensive defensive side of the ball that have been there for over. 20 years uh, for Central A&M offensive line coach Doug Morrow. He's been there since 1992, 30 years. So he's been there for a state title. Then you have Coach Midler, who's the defensive coordinator for A&M. He started 19, well, he was there in 1997 when they won a state title. So guys that have been around the block. And then on the St. Teresa side, John Hayden. He's somebody that Coach Miller raved about. And when I talked to other people in the community, they raved about Coach Hayden. He's just had a huge impact on the team and on the players and from the present to the past. Are there any coaches maybe in your life that kind of had an impact on you? Yeah, so my high school basketball coach for three years, Jay Rexroth, one of the best people that honestly I've ever met in my entire life. He took over um, the program my sophomore year and just completely I just love those coaches that don't only make an impact for you on the court, but off the court. And he was just someone that cared about me and my teammates so deep, deeply, both on and off. And those are just the kind of coaches that mean the absolute most to you. Do you yeah. have any coaches? Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of my football coaches um, was always my favorite uh, coaching staff to work with. And when we come back on the Starry Lemon Live preview show, we will take one final look at tonight's matchup between the Bulldogs of St. Teresa and the Central A&M Raiders. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Starry Lemon Lime Preview Show. We're going to turn it over to our meteorologist, Darren Lees, for a final look at the weather before tonight's game. Yeah, and I mean, the weather is pretty much what you'd ask for for fall football here in central Illinois. It's not chilly whatsoever. A little bit of a breeze kind of coming through out of the north. Really don't think that's going to impact their kicking game whatsoever. Maybe if we had some east or west winds that are coming through. But temperature-wise, kind of comfortable. It's maybe t-shirt, kind of light jacket weather if you will but I mean these kids are going to be moving around all over they're going to stay warm so don't need to break out the thick layers of Under Armour or anything like that but probably by third fourth quarter maybe you guys hanging out on the sideline might want a light jacket temperatures are going to be dropping back down into the low 60s by that point in time but yeah things looking really good and uh, yeah beautiful night for some football here. Awesome. And also to mention for Central Illinois fans that are fans of the Fighting Illini, the Illini are currently taking on Kansas right now. That game just started about six minutes in. They're currently down 7 nothing to the Jayhawks of Kansas. But something uh, to be excited about football on Friday night. You, you really can't beat it. Mm -hmm. And that'll do it for us from Milliken University, the Story Lemon Line preview show. I'm Brielle Berry, joined alongside Dante Perko. Back to you. St. Teresa Bulldogs host the Central A&M Raiders. SEPQ Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20 starts now. We're in Decatur as the St. Teresa Bulldogs host the Central A&M Raiders. SEPQ Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20 starts now. Watching Sefku Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Good evening and welcome to Sefq Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. We're in Decatur as the St. Teresa Bulldogs will take on the Central A&M Raiders. Paul Wappel, Adam Anderson, we're ready to go. We've got a beautiful night for football. We're not on St. Teresa's home field tonight. But... No, a uh, little mishap construction just got behind delays. That seems to happen in this world round. But a beautiful revamped Milliken facility. We're on turf. It's football weather. It's kind of going to maybe be a little chilly tonight. But it's going to be hot action out here on the field. St. 
Teresa, 0-2, Central A&M, 1-1. One one. What do you see as the keys to tonight's game? Seth Q is your key to getting a new home loan. Uh, first off, for Central A&M, it's just keep taking steps forward. Coach Weekly talked earlier this week with Dante. They've had a lot of injuries in, in two weeks, and I'm talking a lot of injuries. So you're going to see some moving around. You're going to see some different things. Hopefully that can spring them to a victory tonight. For the St. Teresa Bulldogs, you got to find some rhythm offensively. Granted, they have played some very, very top-tier competition these first two weeks, but they seem to be a little out of, out of rhythm. They need to probably rely on Monty Snyder a little bit in the backfield to get them going and, and have a big game for them tonight. All right. We have beautiful weather. Like we said, should be a good game. Right now, we're going to turn it over to the third member of the broadcast team, Dante Furco. Dante has tonight's Brandt Professional Agriculture Field Conditions. Dante? Thank you, Paul. We're here on Frank M. Lindsay Field for a beautiful night for high school football across the area, but especially here in Decatur. We have about 73 degrees at this moment, but as we get closer to that halftime as well as the end of the game, we're going to see a little bit of a cool down into the high 60s. We have a low turf on this field. The ball may be rolling a little bit, whether it is in the kick game or even if there's a fumble on the offensive side of the ball. Also, to mention a little tad, a little bit of a breeze. So when the kickers are kicking, will that have an impact? Something we'll have to wait and see. St. Teresa and Central A&M both have reliable kickers in that kick game. So something to keep an eye out on as we uh, head into tonight's game. Back to you, Paul. Decatur, St. Teresa, and Central A&M. Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals, is up next. Welcome back to SEFQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Paul Wapple, Adam Anderson, Dante Furco, the entire SEFQ Friday Night Rivals crew at Millican University in Decatur. We're awaiting the start of Decatur St. Teresa and Central A&M. Uh, this is a non-conference matchup. It uh, it'd take too long to explain why it's a non-conference <laughs> matchup, but it is. Uh, it's going to be a big one here tonight. Both teams Really looking for victories, especially St. Teresa, who's sitting at 0-2 right now. Defending state champion, talking about the Bulldogs and 0-2, and a lot of people really concerned. And obviously you lose two, but they played two. We talked about on a previous show, two top-notch teams, one in Indiana. They played Belleville Altoff last week. Central A&M 1-1. Uh, this, is, this is always a big game and a, and, a, and a big rivalry. Yeah, definitely a big rivalry. A lot of history between uh, these two teams. A lot of coaches have coached with St. Teresa and with Central A&M. And a lot of coaches now on the sideline were players in this game as well. So uh, it, it's definitely one both communities really look forward to. There's a huge crowd still filing in here at, at Millican University tonight. 
and we are just about set for the kickoff an absolutely gorgeous night 70 degrees temperature will drop a little bit during the game and this is what it's all about yeah this is this is the football weather you you want and you talk about not that week one stuff that we had and it's crazy to think of two weeks ago we were watching a uh, weather bulb on the sideline <laughs> to now we can just get out there and it's just beautiful and we are just about set the bulldogs of saint Teresa will receive the kickoff and we are underway that is a kickoff brought to you by bridge care suites Fielded cleanly, still on his feet at the 30, 35, got some speed. Look at him go to the 47-yard line. How about that for a good start? Great return there for St. Teresa. Yeah, that was a 23, Tylon Davis. He is a sophomore. Uh, beautiful field position. Again, those are the, the momentum plays that uh, Coach Miller is looking for out of his guys. If, if they get off to a hot start here tonight, it could be a long night for the Raider fans. As you said, excellent field position as the Bulldogs start the first offensive possession of the game. Led by quarterback senior Max Solowski. 6'5", 205 pounds. He is a good one. First handoff of the game. Cross midfield. Cut Jacarion Jones. 5'9", 230 pounds. He's a force. Yes, he is a big body coming out of the backfield. Great first play. Good first down run there by the St. Teresa Bulldogs. Got about seven, so we'll call it second and three. The Bulldogs off to a good start here and early going. Jones is a tough one. Got three in the backfield. You're going to see a lot of misdirection here. And there's this direction in the Raiders. Well, they read it, but he, Jones broke a tackle. Still on his feet down the sidelines after the 30. Out of bounds, about the 28-yard line. That is a first down. That's a brand professional agriculture first down. And to carry on Jones, they we're going to call his name a lot. Boy, he's got a ton already. If you take a look right there, he was hit right at the line, stuffed, and then he is just a hard guy to bring down. Uh, Caden Pearsall got to him early, but just didn't that wrap it up wrap up enough to bring Jacarian Jones down. Uh, you got to make sure you do that or he's going to make you pay for it. Bulldogs first and 10 from the 28 of Central A&M. There's the handoff to Jones. Goes up the middle. Stuffed by uh, three or four Raiders. Not much on the play if anything. Bring up second and long. Again, it took uh, three or four white jerseys to bring down Jacarian Jones. If he's making A&M do that all night, it, it could be a long night for the Raiders. First quarter action from Millican University. Full backfield. Keep an eye on number Bulldogs. nine, Bryson Oliver out front here. And here's the carry. Still on his feet is Monty Snyder. The Bulldogs have a lot of weapons on offense. Snyder's a, a guy we talked about uh, in the pregame. One of the better athletes you're going to see out there on the field. He, you know, not very big, but he's he's hard to bring down. He'll make you pay for your mistakes. And right there, since my aim got lucky, he wasn't able to turn the corner on him. Coach Miller said he's he's sneaky. He's a sneaky player. <laughs> Jones is big and Snyder's sneaky. They're both very talented. With this formation St. Teresa's in, it's making it hard for Central AM to focus on one guy. Third and one, Jones gets the first down, still on his feet, breaking several tackles. Finally brought down about the five yard line. That's another first down for the Bulldogs and a Grant Professional Agriculture first down and the Bulldogs are having their way here in the, on their opening drive. This is what Coach Miller wanted to see and needed, honestly, to see out of his guys to start this football game. First and goal from the five for St. Teresa. There's the give to Jones. Brought down this time. Lost the yard on the play. Good defense by Drew Damry. A good stop, number 11. Yeah, the Raiders hold tough right there. Again, it, it's taken three, four guys to, <laughs> to bring down Jones. He's going to be a tough runner. He could wear them down here all night with just his sheer size. Second and goal from the six. And the give is to Bryson Oliver, number nine. 
And not much there, if anything. Yep, Oliver's name. First time we've called that tonight. Again, another sneaky running back slash receiver that will get back there with him. Just great job by the Raider defense to extend this out and then pursue him to push him back where more jerseys are. This is a big third down for St. For Teresa. It definitely is. Oliver, 6'1", 188 pounds. He's just a sophomore. Third and goal from the five for St. Teresa. Who will get it? A pass this time. Complete. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Monty Snyder. And that is a Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. They're our touchdown sponsor this season. St. Teresa gets on the board, six to nothing. The way the running back, the running game has worked for St. Teresa, just a simple play action pass here. Snyder sneaks out to the flat and doesn't have to do a whole lot, but makes one guy miss right here and stretches enough to get into the end zone. I said a couple plays ago, he's sneaky. He sure was, snuck his way in the end zone. Bulldogs will attempt the extra point, trying to make it seven to nothing. We talked in the previous show, both teams have good kickers. Noah Sutton, the point after attempt. It is good. And with 8.02 left in the first quarter, St. Teresa's leads seven to nothing. And we'll take a timeout. Back with more in just a minute from Decatur. Welcome back to CFQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Paul Waffle, Adam Anderson, Dante Furco, our sideline reporter. First quarter action, the Bulldogs of St. Teresa strike first, and they will kick off to the Raiders, and that is a Bridge Care Suites kickoff, and it goes out of bounds, so the flag goes up, Adam Anderson. Yep, and uh, Central a is going to probably take the flag and start with really, really good field position. So this will be our first look at the a and Raiders offense. Led by senior quarterback Drew Damery. Had a big game last week. 300 and... Offsides on the kicking team. Wait for the official to... I think he's going to make it re kick it. <laughs> Call offsides. Dead ball. Yeah. Offsides on the kicking team. Re-kick. Okay, so they're going to re-kick. Okay, like you said. And that's what they'll do. With 8.02 to go here in the first. They'll try it again. So we'll just move back five yards, do it again. So what they're seeing right there is there were a, a St. Teresa uh, Bulldog actually got ahead of the kicker, and that penalty is first before the ball went out of bounds. So here we are, kicking it again. Okay. And there's another Bridge Care Suites kickoff. Fielded at the 15-yard line. Out to the 30, almost to the 35-yard line. A good return for the Raiders on that play. That Philip Lehman. So Central A&M has been a up-tempo, very fast offense. Uh, we talked to Coach Weekly earlier this week. They're still trying to figure out what they are. Are, are they a power run? Are they a pass? Are they kind of a hybrid of both? So you can see a, a variety of looks here tonight out of Central A&M. Check that. That was Carter Thomas with the kickoff return for AM. First and 10 for the Raiders from their own 34 yard line. Raiders trail 7 to nothing. And Q 
keeps it himself, does Damry. Up the middle. It's about four on the play. We talked about he can run and he can throw. Yeah, he third year starting quarterback. He's been kind of uh, just a, not the focal point. He's always had guys to really lean on and get the ball to in past years. Now this year it is his team. He is the leader. Again, not by uh, vocal leader. He's not a very vocal kid, and, and Coach Weekly's working on that. He is a show by example, but he's done a great job here this season. Pearsall in the backfield. On second down, and there's the give to Thomas. Maybe a yard on the play, too. Yeah, Just that. Bottled up front. Great job by the Bulldog defensive line right here. Didn't get heavy penetration, but just didn't allow any movement either. And it got Thomas right there at the line of scrimmage. Maybe, maybe got a yard. I think that's actually probably a pretty good spot on him. This is a big third down for Central a and I know we're early in the game, but the way St. Teresa marched down the field with that running game, a and really needs to respond right here with a nice drive. We saw a shot of uh, St. Teresa coach Britt Miller. We'll talk about him a little bit. A former NFL player and U of I player. Stand up. A legend here in Decatur. On third and seven. Back to throw is Damry. Scrambles. Still running. Throws left. Complete. Good for the first down. And that's a Brant Professor of Agriculture first down. Hayden Sams with the reception. Yeah, great job of Damry uh, getting outside of the pocket. And again, I talk about it every year, Paul, but he's a right-handed quarterback rolling left. So that is not an easy throw, but he does a good job of turning his shoulders right there and getting the ball out of his hands. First down, Central a &M. Good catch by Sams and kept his feet in. You only need one but uh, in high school, but... A good job. They got the first down. Start from their own 48. Drew Damery and the Raiders trailing seven to nothing. Thomas is in motion, and but the give is to Pearsall. Listen to 5'10", 225. He looked as big as that down on the field earlier. Good job directing traffic there with this lineman out in front of him. He's a big running back that, that hopefully can have some punishing runs and kind of wear down the Bulldogs. Also a sophomore as well. There, you're going to hear there's a lot of youth in the game here tonight. <laughs> Second and two from the 44 of St. Teresa. Damry keeps it. Goes left. Can't find any much room. Let's see where they spot that. He might have a first down. And I think yep. you're you correct. Do. That's a brand professional agriculture first down. So Damry gets enough on the keeper. They move the chains, and the Raiders continue to move down the field. You know, St. Teresa has done a good job uh, bottling Damry up. Again, he's the guy they're probably keeping most of an eye on, but. Pearsall. Uh, again, I talked about number two, Matt explained, just listed at 6'5", 210. He is a big body out there. He's a big target for Dan Reed to try to find. On first down, what will the Raiders do? Whistle oh, a flag. A delay game. Offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. That'll make it First and 15 for Central a and And uh, Adam, the Illinois fighting Illini, speaking of Brett Miller, former Illini, they're playing Kansas tonight in Kansas, and we have a score. It's 7 nothing. Illinois down already. That's all right. That's we're, all right. It's early. It's early. It's still early. It's early. I wish they weren't playing on a Friday night. I think that should be a <laughs> high school football night, but I'll, I'll argue with Big Ten officials later. On first down, there's the give to Thomas. He's got some room. Good run there to make up some of that yardage from the penalty and a little bit more. So, Great block out front by number eight, Evan Pearsall. He's the one that really sprung that run, or it was going to go nowhere. Uh, he had a key block there on the outside that allowed Thomas to cut back in and, and get him in a, a great second down situation. 4.26 to go in the first quarter. Perfect Friday night for high school football in Illinois. Second and six. 
Back to throw is Damry. Throws far and a little too much. Intended receiver was number 15, Gavin Houchin, 6'3", 183-pound senior. And right now we're going to go down to check in with Dante Furco with the for the CASCOM sideline report. CASCOM keeping you connected, Dante. In July of 2022, the Raiders lost a brother in Connor Rowcliffe. When I spoke to Coach this week, he talked about how special Connor's senior season would have been and how the team is coming together this season to honor his absence. Weekly also told me these guys are trying to figure out a leader for this group this year because Connor was the leader of all leaders for the Raiders. So in his absence, they're, they're looking to fill that role. We, uh, the team this year, they're wearing shirts ahead of their games with Connor's helmet on it. I have Connor's helmet right here. As you can see, the number 34 decal. Back up to you guys. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, an interception there, return for a touchdown on the play. Number 23, Brett Cleary. And that is a Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. The Bulldogs strike with a big pick six, Adam. Yeah, it was a screen play that was snuffed out early. I think Danry thought there was a an opening to, to deliver that ball, and uh, he did not. He, he found a lot of blue jerseys out there, and, and once it was picked off, there was no one out in front of him. The Bulldogs will attempt the extra point now, try to make it 14 to nothing. 353 left in the first. Noah Sutton will attempt the extra point, but not yet. Time is called by the officials. And equipment. Oh, legal substitution on the defense. 12 men on the field. Half the distance to go. Retry the try. So it'll be a little bit closer for the <laughs> we'll extra point. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Half the distance. So. Noah Sutton will try it from a little closer. And it is good. So 14 to nothing, St. Teresa after the interception. We're going to take a timeout. Back with more from Decatur. You're watching Sefki Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us. Welcome back to SEFQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. We're in Decatur at Millican University, St. Teresa and Central A&M. Uh, SEFQ Friday Night Rivals matchup. 3.53 left in the first quarter, and so far it's been uh, all St. Teresa. Yeah, and if you're a Central A&M fan, you, you're upset that you're down 14 nothing. but you did have some success moving the football. Just you got to take care of those turnovers. You can't let that stuff happen. And there's a bridge care sweet kickoff, and the ball is stopped at the by Landon True Blood. So Central A&M will get another chance on offense after they just threw the pick six, which made it 14 to nothing. So see how the Raiders recover from that turnover, Adam. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they respond. They, you know, they did move the ball uh, fairly well uh, against this St. Teresa defense. Again, just a uh, screen pass. Great job by St. Teresa to, to make a play and, and take full advantage of it on the turnover. Central AM and m 1-1, one and one, St. Teresa 0-2. Oh ball on the 27. 
High snap. Damry gets it. Throws left. Complete. He's got some Still room. his feet. Down the sidelines. They He's gone. They're not going to catch him. He's going to go all the way. 73 yards for the touchdown. Hayden oh, Sams. No. Is there a flag on the play? They're going to say he stepped out of bounds. Out of bounds. Oh, man. If you're Central a and <laughs> I think you're pretty heated right now. But again, from our vantage we point, it's, it's going to be going away from us. Let's see if we can. I don't think there's just too much going on. Hard to, hard to tell right there. I don't know if we have a different angle, but that's, wow. So it's a first down. It's a brand for Federal Agriculture. First down. They spotted it. We went out of bounds. They say at the 46 yard line. I see it right. I don't know. I maybe it was from from that. that replay. Again, we have the benefit of replay. These officials and, and coaches don't. But from that replay, I'm not sure he stepped on that white line. Devin Pearsall with the carry on second down. First down. Check that. If you're Central a and you need to regroup right now. You just had a big play that you essentially got called back. So, you know, you're upset that you had six points taken off the board, but have to regroup mentally and, and still continue this drive. You're, you're moving the football on this defense. You're not out of it by any means. We're still very early in the game. Second and 11 for Drew Damry and the Raiders. And there's the carrier outside. Still on his feet is Thomas. Let's go down to the sidelines with the CASCOM sideline report. CASCOM keeping you connected. Dante? I'm here with Nina Brown of Seth Q, one of our main sponsors. Talk to me a little bit about what makes this uh, partnership so special between Friday Night Rivals and Seth Q. Uh, Seth Q just likes to be involved in the communities where we serve. Awesome. Is there anything going on right now with Seth Q that people should know about? Yeah, we have a checking bonus right now. So if you come in and open a checking account, you're able to get up to $175. Awesome. That's exciting. And anything coming up in the future, maybe events or something you guys are doing that people should know about? Yeah, we are sponsors for the Girl Scouts Diamonds and Diamonds and Desserts and also for the Park District Zoorific event. Awesome. Thank you. It's Nina Brown with SAFQ. Back up to you guys. All right. Thank you very much. And you saw the run there. And did they give him the first? Yeah, they're yes, give they him the do. First down, yep. And that's a brand professional agriculture first down for Central A and M. They worked hard on that one to get it, but they got it, so they continue to move. Again, they've been successful a, a lot to the outside. Uh, the interior line here for St. Teresa has done a great job, uh, not so much with penetration, just holding their ground and not giving a lot of openings. From the 44, Damry keeps it himself. Up the middle. Gets a few yards on the play. Now I'm sure Coach Weekly is going to talk to Damry. They came out of the huddle with about four seconds left on the play clock. So they need to speed up their huddles a little bit and get back on the football. Just so they're not losing five yards. And, and, and that's a big penalty in a tight game like this. 117 left in the first quarter. We're at Millican University. Frank M. Lindsay Field. On second and six. There's Thomas. And the play is stopped. I think you're going to get a... No, there's no flag this, came out. They just started the play. Let's see. I don't really know what happened there. <laughs> People at home, I'm, I'm kind of. No flag came out. He was. I don't know they if the them. ball wasn't spotted, or where the down marker was, or the down marker was not in the right spot with the ball, and that's why he he stopped the play beforehand. The the official on the St. Teresa sideline. So se second and six. I've not seen that one before. <laughs> From the forty. Damry. Cuts back the other way. He, the he goes wide. He might room. make it. And I think he did get it. Let's see where they mark. He dove there at the sideline. Let's see where they mark him out of bounds. Again, St. Teresa, or St. Teresa, excuse me, Central A&M is getting up to the line with not a lot of time left on the play call. So it feels like they're hurrying 
their cadence and snaps with motion. And I think that's going to maybe do it for the first quarter. And he did not get the first down. The replay, Greg Camelwork showed where Jeremy went out of bounds. So after one quarter here at Millican University, 14 to nothing, St. Teresa. And here's a look at the first quarter scoring summary brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. 14 to nothing, Decatur St. Teresa over the Central A&M Raiders. You're watching Seth Q Friday Night Rivals on CW23. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to Seth Hugh Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20. We're just about set to start the second quarter here in Decatur at Millican University. The Central AM Raiders trying to get on the board. They trail St. Teresa 14 to nothing on third down and two from the 36. A little throw. trickery here. Throws wide open and he's going to make it into the end zone. Touchdown. Gavin Houchins gets the touchdown. The pass from Carter Thomas. How about that? What a way to open the second quarter. That's an Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. Great job dialing that up by Central A&M. Must have saw something there at the end of the quarter, so they talked about it. Good throw by Carter Thomas to deliver to Houchins. And Central a and going to make this a ball game. We, we talked not to panic because it was only 14 to nothing. Uh, th this is going to be a dogfight till the end of the whistle. Philip Lehman, the senior, will attempt the extra point to try to cut that lead to seven. And he does. It is good. 14 to seven, just like that. 11.52 to go in the second quarter. And Raiders are right back in it. And we said we thought this would be a good one. And it has been so far. You know, the, the turnover on their first series just... Unfortunate incident. It was a, a great job defensively by the Bulldogs and snuffed it out. And, you know, St. Teresa's only had one offensive series here tonight anyways. And watch Family Law tonight following Friday Night Rivals right here on CW23. So early, only eight seconds into the second quarter. And say it again, just an absolutely perfect night for high school football. Maybe not the sweaters and that, but uh, maybe a light jacket tonight. Light Wind jacket, breaker, yeah. You know? yeah. You'd, I think you'd be okay out here with a, <laughs> a light jacket. It, uh, just beautiful football weather. This is this is what you think about when you think of football weather. Absolutely. So 14-7, to seven, like we said, the Raiders 1-1, one one, Decatur St. Teresa, the defending state champions 0-2. Much, much better than their record indicates. 
Yeah, you know, no doubt about it. Played uh, Linton Stockton out of Indiana, which is a small school powerhouse, uh, and then played Altoff Catholic, home of one Paul Wapple. <laughs> My alma mater, Belleville Altoff, uh, yes. And, and they're loaded this year. Loaded, and, and actually because of the rules, they get to play down to their actual classification of, or their enrollment, so they will be in the 1A, which uh, Central a is now. And there's a Bridge Care Suites kickoff by Philip Lehman. Fielded at the 15. Got some room right side, some speed, 35-40. Cross midfield, better get him. They do, but not till about the 41-yard line. A heck of a return there by number 34, Monte Snyder. Monte Snyder. Yeah, you know, they, they need it. We've talked about Snyder being sneaky. He didn't do anything sneaky right there. He just turned on the Jets. Great job blocking out in front of him, and he did the rest with his feet. Central A&M's got to limit these big plays. They're going to put themselves in some bad positions tonight. So excellent field position for the Bulldogs. Raiders have the work cut out for themselves here. You don't want to give those Bulldogs an advantage like this. No, let's see what kind of adjustments Central A&M has made after that first drive again. St. Teresa's only had the ball offensively once here tonight. Chalowski hands off the first guy through, and that's Jones. Barrels his way to the 36, 37 yard line. He took uh, Maddox playing for a little ride there. <laughs> Plain met him about two yards past the line of scrimmage. And he check here on the replay. He tried to bring him down. And Maddox Plain <laughs> is, a, is a big kid, folks. So 6'5". Yeah, that is, that is not easy to do. And then Jones just took him for a, a little stroll here tonight. Second and four for the Bulldogs. There's to give to Jones. Look at him go. He's got some power. And that is a first down. Brant Professional Agriculture first down for St. Teresa as they continue marching down the field. Yeah, if it worked one way, just go back and, and do it again. Do the other way. Got some other high school football games we'll be keeping an eye on tonight. We'll bring you scores as we have them. And I'll say something I never thought I would say. Central State 8 co-leader Lincoln looking to go 3-0 and tonight, which would do pretty special things to their playoff chances this year. And they've got a chance tonight. They're yeah. playing uh, Springfield High over at Memorial Stadium, who they will be there next week. Springfield High and Chatham Club. Yep. Central State 8 matchup. So 11 7 to go here in the Second quarter, officials are yeah, we're ready. Ball on the 26 yard line of Central AM. There's to give to Snyder. Goes right, still going. Look at that speed. Cuts back, and we have a flag on the play. Yep, you're going to get a block in the back or a clip. And uh, the Bulldogs are lucky that a flag was a holding flag wasn't thrown on number 33, Jakarian Jones. He had a, a handful of uh, Raider defensive linemen uh, right at the, the beginning of that play. Personal foul, blindside block on the offense, number six. So that's a big, big yeah, penalty. That's a 15 yard Teresa. penalty. Yep. Uh, again, you know, for guys my age, that that wasn't called 10, 15 years ago. But to make this game a lot safer, that is a personal foul penalty now to take out those kind of hits. So now you're talking ball at the 35-yard line. So a break for the Raiders there. Let's see what Shalowski does. Haven't seen we well, I guess he threw one just a little dump out to the flat. Let's see if uh, we see what kind of arm Shalowski has here tonight. First and 19. There's a pass. A little too much. Ten receiver Monty Snyder. All he had to do was talk about the pass, Adam. And <laughs> he tried one. Didn't work. A little too much on it. You know, Shalowski's listed at 6'5. He seems a lot taller as I was down there during warm-ups. Big kid. He does have a decent arm. He is a uh, a load and he kind of is your prototypical quarterback when you think of if you were to close your eyes and think of one that's what Max Shalowski would probably come to mind uh, hasn't got a ton of playing time got hurt 
as a sophomore, again, was a backup last year and only got mop-up duties on that great state championship team. They're really hoping he grows this year. On second and 19, Jones barrels his way to the 25-yard line. Makes up some good yardage there. You know, he got about 10 yards that he really had almost no business <laughs> getting. And for folks at home, how do you try to tackle a kid like that? You just hope you can hit him and grab a leg, an arm, a foot, something that will help slow him down to, to maybe he trips over you. He is solid, 230 pounds. Third and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Jones in the backfield. Chalowski might be changing the play. I think you're going to get a, a false start flag on the play. Full start on the offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. Well, that doesn't make the coach happy. So go from third and 10 to third and 15 now. Getting some substitutions here, getting some different guys in. You know, we haven't seen him go back to that three back formation that they had so much success with on that first drive. I wonder if we'll see that here on third down. Third and 15. Shalowski gives to Jones. Oh, he no, kept it. Kept it. Great read kept by it. Pearsall. Nice tackle there. That'll bring up fourth and long. You got a punt here at Manderson? You got to go for it. Well, you're you really, you're kind it's, of in no man's land mm -hmm. here. You're, it's fourth and a lot. You have a field goal kicker that uh, Coach Miller talked about. He, he's kicked from 40. He's got no problem handing him the football. I, the offense looks like they're staying out there. Maybe you could quick punt it just to play a little field position. Have Shalowski just kind of kick it real fast. But and Let's see. On fourth and 20, Chalowski is going to throw deep, going to the end zone, overthrew his man. They went for it, didn't quite get it. Jones checked that Snyder, the intended receiver. So they will, St. Teresa will turn it over and the a &M Raiders get the ball on down. Hey, if you're Central a &M, you've got a lot of momentum on your sideline right now. You've got to capitalize on it. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Coach Weekly tries to maybe hit a home run play on the first play of scrimmage. Uh, but that that's a huge stop. You know, penalties were killer for the Bulldogs on that drive. Since you said baseball and home run, I have to bring up something. 25 years ago tonight, Mark McGuire hit his 62nd home run for the St. Louis Cardinals. 25 years. 25 years. Man, Time that, flies. That makes me feel really old, Paul. Oh, so I appreciate. Oh, it. <laughs> so I had to throw that in. All right, 8:26 to go here in the second quarter. Central A&M from their own 31. On first down. Two men in motion. Keeps it. No, throws it. Complete to the 35-yard line, Carter Thomas. So that is a, a run-pass option right here. So technically you have three plays called. He could have handed off to Pearsall. Damry could have run it, or he could flip it out to Thomas. Now Thomas has got to make sure he gets that catch secured first and foremost, but... Essentially, it's just a long run right there. A lot of work, but they got a few yards on it. So second and eight now for Central A&M. You know, A&M's pace is very methodical. I wonder if that's something they talked about this week in practice to, to maybe slow down the big guns of the Bulldogs. There's the handoff and maybe to the 35-yard line. Back line of scrimmage, maybe, maybe a yard, if, if that. Maybe on the play. You know, the, the interior line for, for St. Teresa has done a great job. Noah Sloan, Samandra Young, Owen Jadika. Those guys have done great up front to really slow down Central A&M. So third and seven. From the 36-yard line. And the Raiders do take their yeah, time, don't they? Their they time. really do. They're, they're, you know, I wonder now if you're going to see him run down the play and, and just call a timeout here and talk about it because this is a big third down for Central A&M. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. So the Raiders call 
timeout. We'll do the same thing. We'll take a timeout. You're watching SefQ Friday Night Rivals. Back with more from Milken University in just a minute. Welcome back to SefQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. St. Teresa leads Central A&M 14-7. Second quarter action from Decatur. We're at Millican University, St. Teresa's field and home, stand, home uh, field is getting worked on and the stands too. All right, on third down, Jeremy with the throw. Incomplete. Intended receiver Carter Thomas. Get some pressure in his face. Take a look at the replay. Good job to get rid of it. Had to step up. Didn't really deliver that one with, I think, where he wanted to put it just because of the pressure coming from number 71, Braden Daly. So now it's fourth and seven. Punt situation for Central AM. Pretty good punt. Oh, oh, takes a Raider bounce. bounce. And they'll down it at the 17-yard line. So good punt there for Central A&M. And right now we're going to hear about Lincoln Land Community College. We're here with Jeff Martin, Workforce Recruitment Coordinator for the Workforce Institute at Lincoln Land Community College. Jeff, appreciate you coming in. Absolutely. The studio. AJ, thanks for having me over. I appreciate it. I appreciate it a lot. Of course. And we're talking, of course, Lincoln Land. And uh, if someone's thinking about college or career training now that school's kicking back up, maybe looking towards the future, how right. can you help them? So, Lincoln Land Community College is a fantastic place for someone to begin their educational journey, whether it's into uh, pursuing a degree or maybe even going into workforce career-based educational training we have a number of programs we have a huge support staff you know financial aid options it's really just a fantastic start for so many people into their careers and you know education is pinnacle to somebody being able to become the best version of themselves it really is and I heard you guys have an open house coming up for people who might be interested yes we do actually which is going to be a fantastic event I encourage anyone to come out to it it's Monday October 9th uh, from 11 a.m. to 2 it's going to be a great time. We are going to be having staff there to provide tours of the different buildings that we have, uh, learn about the different programs, the resources, and really just a really fun way to be able to introduce the college to our community and to people who are prospectively looking at pursuing their education. And if someone is thinking, watch the broadcast right now, hey, you know what, I might be interested in hitting that Bell LCC, how can they sign up for the open house? So it's not too hard to do. You're going to go to www.llcc.edu backslash open house, and you have to put a little slash in the middle of open house there. It was a space, right? right? Um, so you're going to put that in there, or you're going to call 786-217-786-2577. That's the phone number to be able to link and get registered for the open house event. And like I said, I encourage people to come out, um, particularly in my position. I work with students when they're making that transition from high school or in that crossroads of life into that next step. And, you know, as we know, education is how you do that. And if we can be a way to help somebody become the best version of themselves, this is what Lincoln Lane is here for. Well, we so appreciate you doing it. And Jeff, it was great of you to stop Absolutely. by the studio. Thank Absolutely. you so hey, much. Absolutely. Hey, next time, next time, AJ, 
I'm rocking the bow tie. I'm rock, he, he's, he's, this is the smoothest looking guy right around. <laughs> oh, man, Jeff, so complimentary. I, ever since you walked into the studio, we appreciate you I appreciate so you. You're awesome, AJ. Have a good one. Thanks, and I'll see you guys out there. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And with 5-12 left here in the second quarter, Adam, first two plays, St. Teresa stopped by the Raiders defense, got a big third down coming up. Yeah, you know, I talked as a key to the game is finding rhythm. And after that first drive, I thought St. Teresa had found some rhythm offensively. They have not since that happened. They had the big kick return, but then a few penalties. Again, and first and second down here were, were pretty shut down by the Raider defense. And give credit to Central A&M. They've made some adjustments uh, to what St. Teresa was doing offensively. But that timeout, a good chance to talk, to go over, hey, this is a big third down. we got to move the football. Let's see what they come up with. On third and nine for the 19. There's the pass, tipped and incomplete. So fourth and long, and the Bulldogs will have to punt. Yeah, if you take a look at Shalowski here, just rolling out, just got a little too much on that one. Again, he's got enough time right there to almost slow his feet down and just deliver a strike because he had an open man in number 23, Tylen Davis. So fourth and nine. The Bulldogs backed up deep in their own territory. The Raiders could get this back, the ball back in very good field position. Pretty high punt, pretty good punt as well. It's going to take a central inning bounce. Right at midfield, and Davis downs it. And we're going to take a break. You're watching Seth B. Friday Night Rivals on CW23. Back with more from Millican University in Decatur in just a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sept Two Front End Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Paul Waffle, Adam Anderson, Dante Furco, and the entire Sept Two Front End Rivals crew. Indicator, week three, of high school football season. First and ten from midfield for Central AM. They trail 14 to 7. Damry on the keeper. He's got some room. He does, right side. Breaks the tackle, first down. Still on his feet. Down to the 35-yard line. That's a brand professional agriculture first down and a good call, a good play there by Damry on first down. Yeah, he, he fought for all those yards, and, and he can make guys miss. He's an elusive runner. Uh, great job. A&M, again, he's, they're rolling with that momentum. Let's see if they can get something in here before halftime and tie this game up. We've got a good one. We thought this would be a good one, and we have a good one. A lot of dog fights out there tonight on Friday night with, with games around the area as I'm looking around. It's it's crazy to be thinking about playoffs, but uh, we're we're in week three, and that's when people start kind of, their ears start getting first, noticeable. On first down from the 36, Damry keeps, keeps it himself. It. He's fooled a lot of people. Look at him go. First down, and then some still going. Not till he's at the 15-yard line. They'll move the chains. That's a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. And the Raiders are marching. Great job by Damry. He's got him in a rhythm now. There's a lot of white jerseys fired up. Coach Miller is upset and invisibly so from up here in the press box. I'm surprised the timeout wasn't taken there from St. Teresa just to try to calm their guys down right now. So first and 10 from the 16 now for Drew Damry and the Central AM Raiders. 
Damry hands off right side, Pearsall. A little bit of gain there, not too much. And you said Illinois trails 20? 20 to nothing. Okay. They were Kansas. inside the 10 at last check, so I'm hoping maybe they've moved it on the board, but uh, rough sledding out in uh, Lawrence, Kansas tonight. All right. But Three. I have a lot of other great scores from around the area. We can talk about it at halftime. Oh, that sounds good. 323 <laughs> clock running here in the second quarter. Second down now, eight to go from the 15. Camry back to throw, looks left, almost picked off, incomplete, almost picked off by the yeah, Bulldogs. I wonder if Damry was trying to go, he had two guys and one St. Teresa defender. I almost, I want to take a look at the replay. I think Snyder got his hand in and maybe tipped Damry's motion, but there were two guys open. There was, looks like a lot of confusion from the Bulldogs defensively on where they need to be lined up at, because there was some late moving, some guys moving a lot farther across the field than they probably should before a snap. So whatever Coach Weekly and the Raiders are doing, it, it seems to be confusing the Bulldogs. Adam, I, I know we've said a lot, but this is another big third down. Yeah. Even though we're in the first half, third and eight from the 15 for Central A&M. Timeout. They were running again. Play clock was running down on the Raiders. Obviously, you don't want to use lose five yards there. So with 3.06 left in the second they're going to talk about it the Raiders are and I will let you know that tonight at 10 15 on ABC join us at the News Channel 20 sports desk to get all of your local high school football highlights with the Friday Night Rivals recap on News Channel 20 that's at 10 15 tonight just a few hours or so from now Brielle Berry and staff are all out getting high school highlights and Games all across Central Illinois. They'll have that at 10:15 tonight on News Channel 20. And the Raiders, like I said, they're going to talk about it. Big third down play here. Yeah, they're in four down territory. Coach Weekly, they do have a kicker they like and uh, feel comfortable with. But I, I know the aggressiveness of, of Coach Weekly and the Raiders. I fully expect them. They don't get a first down here to, to go for it on fourth down and try to get six points and potentially tie this football game up. So let's see what the Raiders come up with after the timeout. Pearsall in the backfield. Thomas in motion. Pearsall gets it up the middle. Pretty good play there. Not enough for the first down, but fourth down. Let's see if they go for it. I would think they would. Yeah, I think with that play call right there, it almost cements it, that they're going to go for it here on fourth down. But oh, he's, he might be sending, he's sending a few guys in. He's got some good good kicker. We talked about that. Both teams do. Yep, he did and send up. do it. The points are points. So in. Him. Yeah. And he's a good one. So Lehman can make right in the middle of the field, too. We'll call this a... 31, check that, 26-yarder. Plenty of leg on that one. Wow, kick is up and it is good. So the field goal makes it a 14 to 10 game. St. Teresa, the Raiders cut into the St. Teresa lead. Hey, I, I am surprised that did not see him go for it, but uh, great job by Central a &M on on getting that field goal in. Good kick there by Phil, Phil Flamen. That would have been good for him, about 10, 15 more yards. We talked to the coaches earlier this week, and they said they, on both their kickers, they they very confident in them. So and right now we've got a great time to check in, to check out the smile cam. Check out the SEFQ smile cam. SEFQ smile cam. Look at that. The young, young at heart. And said some have the jackets on, some have shorts. <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> this weather is great for just about anything. Except maybe you don't need a park it tonight or anything like that. But lots of smiles. And boy, Adam, the, the Raiders sideline uh, on the first two plays in the last series where the, 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 the series ago where they stopped the Bulldogs, the crowd, the, the players were really fired up. Yeah. They made that stop on the first two downs and then they had to punt it. Yeah, they're, you know, both crowds are very passionate. 
They're, they're going to live and die on, on about every play here tonight. There's going to be a lot of swings. We've seen it uh, in these games. We've done this game three, three, two, three times now. Um, it doesn't seem as loud because we are more spaced out here at, at Millican University, but the, the passion is still there, and it still is there down on the field as well. Well said, well said. Very true. A good crowd here. So 217, there's a Bridge Care Suites kickoff to high kickoff, fielded at the 24. Jones gets close to the 40 yard line. So the Bulldogs have pretty good field position with 213 to go in the second quarter. They lead 14 to 10. You know, neither team has really completed a downfield pass here tonight. Uh, it's been short, you know, screen passes, bubble throws, and then the one touchdown, offensive touchdown for St. Teresa was a, a quick dump into the flat. So with two minutes here remaining, let's see if they put the ball in the hands of Shalosky and see what he can do, if he can spin it downfield or not. 2.13 to go. First half. Let's see what the Bulldogs do. Hand off to Jones. Raiders are right there. Check that. Yes, it was Jones. Yeah, great. Whatever Central AM talked about and adjusted after that first drive, it's worked wonders for them. And again, there's how you tackle Jordan Jones. You have to go low because you're going to meet him with your shoulders and his shoulders. He's probably going to win 98% of the time. Second and 10. Another misdirection and Jones again. <laughs> Can't get him down this time. Almost the first down. He may have it at him. See what, now he's going to be about a yard short. Yeah, he is short. Okay. You're going to get a timeout here by St. Teresa to dial up a third down play as time's running down. So they've got the ball at the 47 yard line. Third and a long one. I'm not surprised at them going back to that three-back formation. What also is helping is Shalowski's so tall, he kind of hides Jones behind him. And Friday Night Rivals is available streaming live on NewsChannel20.com and on NewsChannel20's Facebook page. You can also find a link to complete game videos from this season on NewsChannel20.com. So, like you said, you can't Maybe hear some of the crowd because we're at Millican University, a great facility. Beautiful, beautiful facility yeah. here in Decatur. Right off of El Dorado, if you're driving through, beautiful backdrop. So third, we're gonna call it, they're gonna call it two. Another big third down play. I know they're trying <laughs> we're tired of hearing them saying it, but it really is. With 136 left. See what the Bulldogs do here. It's the handoff to Jones. He barrels his way. So geez, incredible. First down. A Brant professional agriculture first down for the Bulldogs. So the clock will stop till the change is set, and then they'll, they'll blow it into play again. And Bulldogs going quickly back to the line, Adam. No surprise there. First and 10 from the 48. Stopped right there at the line of scrimmage. Jones. Raiders read that well. Again, another timeout called here by St. Teresa. 113 to go. And Adam, it's been kind of a strange high school football season. You've got Decatur, St. Teresa, we talked about who they played, 0-2. But the first week, the weather, we thought the game might be de delayed or not played uh, Potentially because of the heat and it ends up lightning either <laughs> delays a game or two uh, And they some of these coaches talked about they, they played a game half a game Friday night some of it Saturday Yeah, uh, throughout the state different parts of state uh, Some games started Merle Forsyth. They said they started the first game at 10 25 10 30 at night. Yeah, what a what a crazy just start. A, just a, you you dream of different situations or you try to plan for different situations I'm not sure there was a coach in the state of Illinois that, that planned for that weekend because you had, to, you know, the weather, the delays, the time, and then maybe you have to come back tomorrow. It, it was wild. On second and ten, dumps the pass. is complete to Monty Snyder. Goes left. 
Still on his feet. Brought down at the 45 yard line. A lot of work for maybe about three yards. Yeah. Third down. So this is the play that Snyder scored on, and this time you'll see number 11, Damry, was out there just following Snyder wherever he went, and he did a good job of balling up. Snyder got lucky, almost lost the football right there on the taking a look at the replay, and St. Reese is going to take their last time out here on third down. They really haven't had much downfield success. They haven't given a, a ton of tries, so uh, we'll have to see what, what kind of play call Coach Miller and the offense come up with right here. So 46 seconds left in the second quarter, 14 to 10. In case you just joined us, St. Teresa leads Central A&M. This is a rivalry game, always has been, and like Adam said a few minutes ago, we've done some of these games on Sefke Friday Night Rivals. have had some good ones. Uh, I think it was 2019 was the one. Yeah. Maybe it went 20, down to the wire. 24-22 I think was the final. The, that was the Connor Heaton Raider team that eventually got a runner up and I believe the St. Teresa team that made the semis that year as well. They had a, a great team. St. Teresa has been one of the teams in the last eight, nine years. It's been kind of a, a quarterfinal to semifinal team. You know, they've had a lot of great running backs and athletes come through here. I think of Jacardier Wright, who I think graduated as second all-time in, in touchdown score in the state of Illinois. Third and six. They go to the air. Jones has it on the catch, still on his feet. Down to the 34-yard line. St. Teresa wants to get back to the line in a hurry. They move the chains, first down. That's a brand professional agriculture first down. Yeah. Clock will start, like you said, Adam, after the spot and the clock does run on first spike. down. I think they, yep, they sure do. So, Solowski spikes it, stops the clock. 35 seconds. St. Teresa, you've got some time here, a little bit of time, 35 yards to go. You know, we, we talked to, you know, get it out to Monty Snyder, let him be an athlete in space. That's exactly what... Uh, happened on that play. Just a simple screen pass out to him and, and see if he can do the rest himself. He needs to be careful. Looks like Central and is going for the football when he has it. and He's almost lost it twice here now. Back to throw. Goes the air. Tried to thread the needle. Picked off. Picked off, Picked off at the one. And the ball is loose. And I think it's going to be a St. Teresa... Touch, they call it touchback? No, I think they're going to call the. He was down at the one yard line. The ball came out as he was what tackled. A... Bang, bang play. So there's the. I think they're going to call the ball down at the one yard line because as he ran backwards, he kept the ball out. So the ball's down, runners what down. A, what? Carter Thomas. Not, suddenly, what an effort there. Well, and, to and the, I'm thinking, too, the ball across the, if Thomas was tackled in the end zone, his momentum carried him in there. Is that a – would that have been called a touchback or would that have been called? Because he never – he did establish possession in the uh, regular field of play. Right. So would that yeah. have been – this is where we need, I guess, a, a referee expert <laughs> like uh, Sunday and Saturdays do, but – uh, that might have been a judgment call, but A&M's got to oh. be careful right here. you got 28 seconds. You can't just kneel on it. You, you've you got to do something with the football. Great point. Turnover nonetheless. The Raiders have it. And they want to keep that score 14 to 10. they got to go forward, like you said, Adam. And that's what Damry does. Gets a couple of yards. Gets some breathing room. Really, you just got to run one just play. One more play. But you got to secure that snap. I'm sure Actually, Coach Weekly gonna... was holding his breath on the snap right there. Wow. What Cent a finish to yeah. the first half. Central AM's got to be happy to only be down 14 10 here. I think they've played the better half of football. So 14 to 10, Decatur St. Teresa leads Central AM at halftime here in Decatur. And our scoring summary brought to you by the second quarter scoring summary is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. 14 to 10, St. Teresa, the home team here in Decatur. 14-10, they lead Central A&M, and we have got a great game. Great game, Adam Anderson. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure both both teams have to be, you know, happy with, you know, St. Teresa is in the lead. You can't be super upset. I will say I thought Central A&M had the better first half of football right there. 
Uh, the one turnover leads to the score. I thought they've adjusted well defensively to uh, stop and slow down Jacarian Jones in the backfield. And uh, what St. Teresa needs to do is really figure out offensively who they can turn to, what they can do to, to move the football down the field. That's exactly right. So, oh, I'm excited about the second half of football. That's, that was a really good first half. Some good plays, some turnovers, some big plays, and it, it may come down to the kicker at the end of the game, and we talked about it. Both teams have excellent kickers. It, it may come down to that, Adam. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> uh, it could. This game has been tight in the past. Uh, I fully expected driving over here tonight, thinking about it, that it, it was going to be a, a close one. And um, I'm sure the St. T crowd in front of us is, you know, again, maybe feeling a little uneasy with, with how that half of football played out. And we're lining up <laughs> Coach Brett Miller of St. Teresa, the Bulldogs head coach, for his thoughts on the first half. Dante Furco, News Channel 20, will get his thoughts on the first half as and he'll head into the locker room and we'll go down to Dante take it away I'm here with St. Teresa head coach Brent Miller coach talk to me about that first half what'd you see from your guys you know uh, I think we left a lot out there so um, that's what we're gonna go in and talk about uh, you know giving up a couple uh, interceptions and then you know not taking advantage of one down here in the goal line was big uh, gave him three points so probably the defense the way they bowed up but we got to definitely uh, finish this game What's your message to your team when you go in the, to the locker room? Hey, just finish, right? We're, we're being in this position before. These guys know this feeling, being in the lead. Um, you know, they can't tie us with a field goal, so that's great right now. We just got to keep doing what we're doing and uh, playing a physical brand of football. It looked like you were telling the ref something on the field you were seeing. What, what was that? Well, they, you know, there's a couple guys in motion. I feel like that's illegal most days. Um, so uh, hopefully they get that going a little bit. Um, you know, jet sweeps always uh, predicates a lot of guys wanting to leave early. And uh, so we kind of got burned on that a couple times. But... You know, uh, everybody makes mistakes, and that's fine. All right, that's head coach Britt Miller from St. Teresa. We'll send it back up to you guys. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals in just a minute. Stay with us. And you're watching the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Halftime here in Decatur. Earlier today, SEFQ presented Decatur St. Teresa High School with a $500 donation to say thank you for hosting tonight's Friday Night Rivals matchup. SEFQ will make a $500 donation to each Friday Night Rivals host school throughout the season for use for their general fund. SEFQ is proud to support our communities 
our schools and our students with Friday Night Rivals. And we'll take a break. Back with more on the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Stay right here. Welcome back to the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. And I want to let you know that throughout this Friday Night Rivals season, Route 66 Solar will recognize an exceptional senior student athlete from each participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's Route 66 Solar Scholar athletes are from Decatur St. Teresa, Joella Livingston. Joella Livingston plays basketball, tennis, track, and soccer and has ver won various awards, including MVP in soccer and St. T's Basketball Defensive Player of the Year. She's also made significant academic contributions, earning awards like the Spanish Excellence Award and serving as the treasurer of the National Honor Society. She volunteers for multiple organizations and serves on advisory boards. Additionally, she's an Illinois certified soccer referee with five years of experience. And from Central A&M, Philip Lehman. Philip excels in soccer, track, and football, earning second team all-conference in 2022. He's an academic and computer science champion and leads the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Philip also volunteers at First Christian Church and Vacation Bible School while serving as a camp counselor at Little Galilee. These students are also eligible to win a $5,000 scholarship to be presented at the end of the season courtesy of Route 66 Solar. Route 66 Solar is proud to support and encourage exceptional student athletes across central Illinois. Congratulations to both of this week's Route 66 Solar Scholar athletes from St. Teresa, Joella Livingston, and from Central A&M, Philip Lehman. Congratulations and thanks to Route 66 Solar. Let's check in with Dante Furco. Dante? I'm down here on the field with Larry Daly of St. Teresa and Sasha Young of Central A&M here for tonight, Friday Night Rivals. Talk to me. What does it mean to, you know, the school to host a Friday Night Rivals matchup? Well, it's always exciting, and it looks like we've got a really close game going on, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, our students have been pumped up for this all week, and, uh, you know, this is our first home game, and we've had a couple of rough road games, so I'm, I'm hoping that... Uh, you know, we really continue, hopefully continue to keep the lead and do what we're doing. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it turns out. Awesome. And I know you guys aren't hosting it, but on the road, what is it? How cool is it to have the students be a part of, you know, a locally broadcast game? Sure. This is a great opportunity for our students and for Central A&M. We're happy to be here. It's a great night for football. So I'm excited to see what the second half brings. 
Awesome. And then we know we're here at Milliken because the bleachers are not yet finished over at the high school. Talk to me, when is that going to be done when you guys are expecting that to be done? Uh, we're hoping to have it done by our next home game on the 23rd. So we've, you know, we've been through construction for about the last year and a half. We got the field; it's beautiful. Uh, but now the, the finishing touches will be the bleachers. So we're just really excited about it. Awesome. Well, thank you to Sasha Young and Larry Daly for coming down on to the field and talking with us. Sending it back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Dante. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more on the Fox Illinois halftime report on Friday Night Rivals. Stay here. Welcome back to the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Let's check back in with Dante Furco. Here with head coach, uh, Central a &M Coach Weekly. Talk to me a little about that first half. What would you see from your guys? Ah, you know, uh, I think it always takes a while to get used to who you're playing. And uh, we talked about it, talked about it. It's really hard to simulate how big Jones is, how fast he is. Uh, we preached all week, you got to have 11 hats to the ball to tackle. And I think we were kind of used to our guys in other games being able to single tackle. We can't do that. We got There's no solo tackles in this game. you got to rally to it in multiple guys. And our kids responded really well for the pick six. I thought, uh, you know, they came back and uh, showed some heart. And uh, that's what it's going to take to win this one. Uh, whatever, what, it's going to take everything we got. But uh, our kids, I think, are up to it, and it uh, should be a good second half. Awesome. When you went into that locker room at halftime, what would you, uh, would you tell you guys? Uh, take advantage of the shots that we get, and uh, not only take advantage of make them, uh, make, make your make your opportunities, and uh, good things will happen. Awesome, Coach Weekly of Central A&M. Back to you guys. Thanks, Dante. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate the insights. We're just about set for the third quarter, but right now we're going to show you some highlights from the first half. You know, St. Teresa got off to a hot start with here a big run by by Monty Snyder. And then they're going to go right back to him on this play action pass for to, to get the scoring started uh, right on that first drive. They got two touchdowns. The Bulldogs did in the first half. The Raiders came back and got a touchdown. And that St. Teresa defense here at the start of the game uh, really bottled them up and not a ton of room for the running game. They, they started to put some plays together on that first drive. And then just the unfortunate interception right here. And Tylen Davis took it the distance. Big, big run back there. The pick six. No way they were going to catch him. But the Raiders came back. 
and they settled down. They they were moving the football, and, and they got some things together. Again, they calmed down. Coach Weekly said they, after playing a little bit, they got it to where, hey, you know, we got used to him and came out with a little trickery right here as Thomas found Houchins and got on the board. We worked to perfection, didn't it? That play was worked to perfection. And then here's here's our man, Jacarian Jones, and he was carrying a lot of Raiders in that first half. Rivals so the Raiders lead. Now we're going to take a look. At some Friday Night Rivals and Thursday Night Lights, great moments from across the country. And another, look out, He's Jameer gone. Thomas! He's oh gone. my, Bennett! Jameer Thomas! The first play of the season! Brand going for it all! Oh. He underthrew it a little bit and it's still caught! Man, what a catch! Man, what a play! The first snap of the half is a handoff. The senior Michael Parson, who had the touchdown right before halftime, gets a little boost from Luke Lehu and pushes the pile way ahead. Fortune, untouched. And it's going to be intercepted. Pick off by Dawson. Yeah. Oops, I want something else. Yeah. Boom, oh, great tackle. Like, what? He's the one that came in and made the tackle as well. And you know, some of those people may say, hey, well, it looks like he could have been that. Get out of here. Yeah, Who exactly. cares? Exactly. A great play. But That's what he done with that offense. Hopkins' first play of the game. He's going to go deep down the sideline. <laughs> and it's a one-handed catch. And that's going to go for a touchdown. Is that prime time? His first name is Deep Home, but his last name is his Sanders. They'll pitch it, throw back to fine, and he's got a man wide open downfield. Caught at the 45. Off to the races. Touchdown, Sotomayor. Great highlights. All right. We're going to take a break. You're watching the Fox Illinois Halftime Report on Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us. Welcome back to SEPQ Front Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. I'm Paul Waffle alongside Adam Anderson and Dante Furco. And we're ready for the third quarter to start. And there's a Bridge Care Suites kickoff. Central AM will get the ball. Oh, and they did covers up on the 24 yard line. So number 15, Gavin Houchins, had it for the Raiders. And let's see if the Raiders come out and and take advantage of only trying by four. And yeah, we'll see what, momentum. See what kind of adjustments Coach Miller made halftime wise. Uh, momentum as we went in was all on Central A&M side. So if they can get a, put a good drive here together, 
maybe not even score, but if they can drive down the field, take a bunch of time off the clock, it, it, it could not be great for the Bulldogs as we move farther into this game. So first and 10 from the 24 for the Raiders as we start third quarter. Thomas in motion. Backed up, and now he still hangs in there. Not a good play there for Central A&M. Thomas, they read that really well. Thought he might break out a little bit, but couldn't do it. No, and great penetration up front. As you can see right there, Tylon Davis is the one who stopped Thomas there in the backfield. Didn't tackle him, but slowed him down enough, and he wasn't able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Big five-yard loss. So second and 15 for the Raiders. Still take their time, Adam. They're, like you said, very methodical in offense. Keeping that. Jakarian Jones, offense off the field as well. Here's the handoff. Right side, got some room. Up to the 26-yard line. On the second down play is Evan Pearsall, the 5'10", 225, 225-pound sophomore. Good inside run there. They didn't have a ton of luck inside in that first half, so give them, put them in a little better spot here for third and long. Let's see what the Raiders can do. Third and nine from the 25. See if they go to the air, the Raiders. Looks like they will. Damry. Steps up. No, he's, he's going to run now. He's got some room. He does. Cuts back. First down and then some more out to the 39-yard line. And that's a brand professional agriculture first down. And right now we're going to send it down to Dante Furco for the second half. Brandt professional agriculture field conditions. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's getting a little bit chilly down here. I, mean, I mentioned before the game there was a slight breeze, but as this game continues to progress, the wind keeps picking up a little bit more. We're in the high, mid to high 60s right now. Be interesting to see, like we talked about in the pregame, if this slight breeze will have an impact in the kicking game. We already saw Central A&M not afraid to send out their field goal kicker. So something to keep an eye on as we continue through this game, the light breeze and wind heading in to the end of the second half. All right. Thanks, Dante. Appreciate the insight. 9.55 to go in the third quarter here. Second and nine for the Raiders. It looks like that wind's coming northwest in the face. So the way Central a is going, they would be kicking into the wind right now. Flag. As the play starts, you're going to get a false start here on the Raiders. Good shot of the, see what the wind is doing. The flags are blowing up. steadily, not not huge, but a, a steady wind. And again, it would be in the in the face of Central A&M right now. So, after the penalty, Raiders will... Have second and four, 15. And we'll give some scores to you from across the area in just a minute. After this play on second and 14, they'll call it. Bulldogs looked like they were coming there. Damry throws deep. Incomplete. Tender receiver Carter Thomas. A couple of Bulldog defenders were... They're all around that one, yeah. Uh, Damry's got to be careful. He kind of just heaved that one on a hope and a prayer, and he had two Bulldog defenders right there. He's lucky that one didn't go the other way. And how about a few scores? Yeah, a few score updates. Uh, some of the games we talked about in our uh, starting pregame show, Rochester at last check was up 21 to nothing over MacArthur here in Decatur. Uh, Athens has just taken a 14-6 to lead over Olympia. That game was tied 6-6 at halftime. Uh, Sacred Heart Griffin up 20 to 10 over Jacksonville. Two other big tight games that could have playoff implications. Auburn was up 26 21 on Plains, and then Springfield High was up 15 to 12 over Lincoln. Damry goes long on third and 16, and that one almost picked off. And boy, the Bulldogs going to kick themselves up. They had that one. Number three, Anthony Rice had it, couldn't hang on to it. So 
fourth and long punting situation for the Raiders. Well, I wonder if there was a little bit of confusion there. There are three Central A&M receivers all kind of running in the same area, but uh, that was a heave there from Damry downfield. But, yeah, we had Central A&M, three guys running in, in one spot. Might need to talk that one over here on the sideline before they come back out on offense. So we've got fourth and 16 for the Raiders. Punt and a Raiders bounce. Down at the 32 yard line by Pearsall. So St. Teresa will start their first offensive possession here of the second half from the 32 yard line. And tonight at 10.15 on ABC, join us for the Friday Night Rivals recap on News Channel 20. One outstanding play from around the area will be named the Midwest Bath Play of the Week. That's tonight at 10.15 on News Channel 20. Midwest Bath Play of the Week. We've had a few good choices here tonight. The pick six and the trick play for the touchdown. Not to mention the other games that they're out shooting yeah. and everything, the video of, so... Just yeah, but that was a lot of dog fights tonight. On first down, Bulldogs keep it underground. Sulowski keeps it himself. Gets out to the 38 yard line. Really gutsy run there on first down. Yeah, Sulowski not known for his running, but does a great job right there. Had a whole crew of blue jerseys out in front of him, and that's a good first down run. Gets five, so it'll be second and five. Eight twenty-one to go. Here in the third quarter. Shalowski hands off this time. It's Jones. Up to the forty-one yard line. It's gonna be a little short of the first down. Coach Weekly talked about it with Dante after halftime. <laughs> They, you knew it was going to take all 11 guys to bring him down, but you don't really understand how hard it is until you get out here and try to do it. To carry on Jones. Big senior. Third and short. And it's Jones. He up in the back. Wow. Field. Raiders read that, and Pearsall is fired up. Big play there for the Raiders. That's a huge play because now Coach Miller's got to make a decision right here. You're up four. Do you go for it right here and, and try to keep your offense on the field? Do you play the field position game and kick it? And it looks like he's going to go for it. I look for the same play and hand it back to Jones. Fourth and three from their own 39-yard line. Sorry. Trying to draw the Raiders off. Raiders showing blitz. wonder if we're even going to run a play here. I think they are just trying to draw the Raiders off sides and it doesn't happen. Oh, so we're going to get a timeout. And honestly, at that point, if you take a five-yard penalty, they are going to take the five-yard penalty. I didn't think he called a timeout. Taking a five-yard penalty to, to kick the football isn't a terrible idea. And we're going to take a timeout. You're watching Seth Q, Front Night Rivals on CW23. Stay with us. Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals presented by News Channel 20. We're at Millican University in Decatur. A beautiful night. You get a good shot of the Millican University Frank M. Lindsay Field here. And on fourth and four, the 
Bulldogs do punt. Very high punt. Fair catch at the 40-yard line. So the Raiders that pretty good field position, Adam, to start their next drive. Yeah, definitely going to start it basically almost where they gave up uh, field position on their last offensive series. And to go back there before commercial, there's a lot of confusion, I think, still <laughs> up in the booth here and, and <laughs> down on the sideline. I think the officials assumed uh, Britt Miller, Coach Miller, took a timeout. He, he didn't. He took the penalty, which is, isn't a bad deal. You run down the clock a little bit, keep it out of their hands. And it helps you just maybe with a, the, your punt game. Well, the Raiders assumed there was a timeout. I think the offici officials assumed he was going to call timeout. He, he really actually just took a five-yard penalty. So uh, both teams still have three timeouts here in the second half. 6.47 to go in the third. First and 10 for the Raiders from their 40-yard line. There's to give the Pearsall right side. Gets out to the 45-yard line. Good play on first down. Yeah, good first down. Again, momentum is still on that Central A&M side. If, if you, you were to block the scoreboard, this question for you, Paul, if I were to block off the score, would you assume St. Teresa is winning the football game here tonight? No. No, I would think it's Central A&M. I, I think, you know, Coach Miller talked about it. You know, his message to his guys is uh, we've got to come back out and fight. Uh, this this game's not over. He was happy to be in the lead, but he he knew that this second half was was going to be a dogfight. Got to get that win to get that confidence. Second and five, keeps it himself. Does Damry brought down? Great tackle there by Saint Teresa. Noah Sloan. Yeah, great read there. It's a. Uh, almost an option like play and, and Sloan read early that Damry was going to keep that one and did a great job of of coming down and, and tackling him in the backfield. 6'1", 270 pounds. Brings up third and five for the Raiders. And we are going to get a timeout, timeout here. Yeah. So with 5.24 to go, they timeout and playing on and right now we'd like to thank Antonio's Pizza for providing tonight's meal for the Friday Night Rivals crew anything goes at Antonio's thanks for the pizza it was great as always <laughs> love it anything goes at Antonio's what I was going to say, Adam, is playing on turf is a different experience for some of these players. Yeah. The coach was, co one of the coaches were talking about that. Yeah, you know, and we had this, uh, uh, not really debate, just a, a conversation uh, in my office the other day. I think you're going to start seeing turf become more of a commonplace thing now at, at high schools. Uh, over half of the Sangamo teams have turf. Uh, I, I think it's being talked about a lot uh, around a lot of schools. All right, let's go down to the sideline report. Cascom sideline report with Dante Furco. Dante. Thank you. Tonight's game is not just special because of the Friday Night Rivals implications, but for St. Teresa's Monty Snyder, who is actually from Haiti, his mom and brothers are in town for this week's games, and it's going to be one of the first games they've ever seen him play, so they are here at Milliken tonight to watch their son play. It's an exciting time for the family, traveling all the way from the Haiti, Haiti and into America for the first time. So something that's exciting for all and makes tonight a little bit more special for St. Teresa's Monty Snyder. Thanks, Dante. It's a brand professional agriculture first down. On first down, now it goes the other way. Thomas with the reception still on his feet. Still on his feet, out of bounds inside the 20. And I'll tell you what, Adam, that play before, the catch by Maddox playing number two. We haven't called his name a lot. What a big catch for the first down. And that's the loudest I've heard the Central Indian crowd. They are fired up. They are fired up right now. I think they know they have an opportunity right here to take a lead in this football game. Again, playing, he's six five. That's a big target out there. Did a good job of securing the catch and keeping his feet in bounds. And there's the throw. Thomas has Got it. some room. Left side cuts back to the 10. Inside the 10 to the 8. The Raiders moving inside the red zone and then some. Central A&M's got St. Teresa on their heels right now. 
Coach Weekly has picked up the tempo. He's gone to a no huddle here in the last few plays. I think he sees something. Maybe that'll work to uh, maybe get them into the end zone right here. So first and goal from the eight. The Raiders trail by four. 4.58 left in the third quarter. We've got a good one tonight. Three receivers right, right. Damry keeps it himself. He has some blockers. Going to scoot it. He's going to make he it in? in, and he is in. That's an Abraham Lincoln Kepler for touchdown. And the Raiders are fired up. They have taken the lead 16 to 10. Uh, they're, they're completely on the momentum right now. Great job up front by Central A&M to really create a hole. Again, they haven't had a ton of success up the middle tonight. And right there, they've got St. Teresa guessing, all playing on their heels, not playing on their toes like they were to start this game. And that sideline is rightfully fired up. Philip Lehman to attempt the extra point. Plenty of leg once again. It is good. So the Central A&M Raiders take the lead for the first time tonight. 17 to 14. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching Seth Hugh Friday Night Rivals on CW23. Stay here. Welcome back to SEPQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Paul Wapple, Adam Anderson, Dante Furco, and the SEPQ Friday Night Rivals crew here at Frank M. Lindsay Field, Millican University. Week three, football season and high school football season. We've got a good one, Adam. Yeah, the, this it's going to go down to the wire here. Again, just 440 left in the third quarter and a ton of ball game left, but I think we're going to see a back and forth matchup. And there's Lehman with the Bridge Care Suites kickoff. Jones has it. Still on his feet. Better hang on to that ball. He does, and he's out to the 34 yard line, and that's where St. Teresa's offense will start this drive, Adam. And their confidence has to be a little bit shaken right now, I would think. Yeah, and again, I, I talked about it in the pregame. you got to find some rhythm, and they have not uh, really identified. They're, they've got a few chunk plays, run plays with penalties. Uh, looks like a little bit of their misdirection has not really worked the way they thought it was going to or the way they had planned. Saint, or Central A&M has made some adjustments, too, that's made it tough on this St. Teresa offense. I think they've had the most success with the three running back look. It looks like they're going to go a little bit old school here. And they do. And Jones, it works. First down. On first down. A big run there. They move the change. It's a brand professional agriculture first down. Uh, correction on the kickoff return. That was Monty Snyder for the Bulldogs. But Adam, a first down at their own 46. Bulldogs come out with a good play on first down. Yeah, went old school under center wing T look. At, think about Athens. That's that's really how they're lining up. That's what Coach Ramsey was known for back in the day. You know, he's no longer with St. Teresa, but uh, maybe they still had a little bit of that left in them. Look at Jones. Look at him go. Another first down inside the 40. That's a brand professional agriculture first down. The Bulldogs are on the move. And now, now, if you look at the, the posture in the heads of the Bulldogs, they're a, a lot happier right now. They're, the momentum's come. They've had a few positive plays. That's all it takes uh, to get a, a little bit back in your system. From the 40, hand off to Jones. 
Still with a good gain. They've got the Raiders' defense on their heels right now, Adam. Yeah, it, again, a formation they haven't seen. Uh, and I'm not sure St. I didn't see much of week one, but I'm not sure this is a formation St. Teresa has even been in this year. So it, it's hard to plan. I'm sure Coach Weekly uh, knew they probably had it in the playbook because, again, Coach Ramsey was a guy who coached Coach Weekly, and that was the type of offense that they had run back when uh, Mark Ramsey was at St. Teresa or was at Central A&M. Second and three. Jones again. Look at him go. You can't stop him. He's tough. Yeah, I talked and that's about a first down, a Brad Professor Agriculture first down. And you're going to get a timeout by Central A&M. They just want to talk about to their guys on the field about where to line up, what they're seeing. I talked about Athens and Olympia. It's a fight in a phone booth, and that's what you're doing right here. You're bringing everybody together. And when you have a running back the size of Jacarian Jones, you, one, it's hard to find him, and then two, you have to bring him down. Friday Night Rivals is available streaming live on NewsChannel20.com and on News Channel 20's Facebook page. You can also find a link to complete game videos for this season on NewsChannel20.com. Adam, i got to ask you to follow up on that, that comment about Fight in a phone booth? Is that what you said? Fight in a phone booth. Well, I, I, there aren't many phone booths anymore. Are there? No, they're Do not. people that, know what those are? I'm sure the the, <laughs> Younger the athletes down on the field have no <laughs> idea what I'm talking about. Okay. But uh, So basically what I am intending right there with that saying is uh, when you're really close together, it makes it really hard to uh, disguise what you're doing. You're coming straight at them, and, and there's not a lot of room for error because there's not a lot of room to move. But you can hide some things, and you can do some things offensively to uh, throw different runs, options, keeps. Uh, it, it's an offense that you saw all the time 30, 40 years ago, and it, it's slowly kind of gone away. More spread attack, spreading the field out, but you know, Good. there are teams that live on it. And Mont Monty Snyder with the carry on first down for St. Teresa. What a great story about Monty Snyder's family. Uh, coming from Haiti and being able to watch him here tonight. That is incredible. Second and six. Jones. Not much, that, if anything, there. The best reaction the Raiders have had to this formation. And if you think about it, we've seen three separate almost offensive here from St. Teresa. Their spread attack, you've seen an, an old an eye formation attack, and here we go, an old school wing T attack. Just tr still trying to find their identity. Again, young team, didn't have a lot of returning starters from that state championship team, trying to figure out uh, what's going to work for them. Third and five, 208 left in the third. Shalovsky goes under center, gives to Jones. Trying something a little bit different going under center there on that play. The old Nebraska trap there <laughs> up the middle of you know, the Tom Osborne days back in Nebraska was known for that inside trap with a fullback where you hopefully forget about him and then next thing you know he's 30 yards downfield before you know he has the football but huge fourth down play here by St. Teresa if you're not putting it in Jones hands I'm not sure uh, what they're looking at he's definitely a guy I would give the ball to. Fourth and two would have been about a 42-yard field goal, but I don't think we were lined up correctly either. Coach Coach Hayden is out on the well, field. He, is, he, is, he is fired up. So a timeout. They burn a timeout, and that could be a factor later in this game. Yeah. It, it, with it, the score so close. and A tight game like this, you're, you're burning timeouts just... Especially on a big fourth down like that, you feel comfortable. You roll in a little bit. You've got some momentum. You're playing back on your toes, and then just a lot of confusion coming out of that huddle. 120 left here in the third, and the Bulldogs see what they come up here with here after the timeout on a big, big play. You know, Coach Britt Miller is surrounding himself with a few other former head coaches. That's John Hayden. He uh, had been at Clinton, uh, South Pyatt, some other high schools. Drew Wagers, former Eisenhower head coach, is down there on the sideline as well. On fourth and two, Jones. You give it to Jones. When in doubt, he'll get you the yardage, and he does. It's a Brant professional agriculture first down for the Bulldogs. They keep the drive alive. Yeah, I, 
<laughs> even before the timeout, if you're not handing them the football, I think you're overthinking uh, what you're doing offensively. You just need two yards. He gets you four right there. Great run by Jacarian Jones. From the 15 now, Jones again. Not as much success as the play before, but still everybody in the stadium knew or, that it was going to go to Jones, but you got to stop him. You still got to stop him. <laughs> and, to stop. and a formation like that where you can kind of hide him a little bit. I might have a flag here on. See some of the St. Teresa fans. I think we're resetting the clock, is what they're asking for. 106 left here in the third. 17 14. Central AM over St. Teresa right now. It's been a good one. Clock runs now. Uh, Run it down, it, yeah, yeah, to 45 seconds. Okay, I think that's what 45. Yeah, I see a lot of hand signals. I'm trying to <laughs> decipher <laughs> what uh, is going on. 58. We're getting close. Okay. Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 44. <laughs> Point eight. Close enough. There you go. <laughs> and then they're going to they're going to wind it to start it. They're going to bump the play clock. And... All right. Second and seven for the Bulldogs. Jones left side. Look at him. Breaks the tackles. Better get him. And he oh, is man. in. Touchdown. That's an Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. And the Bulldogs of St. Teresa regained the lead. I think you're going to see them go for two here as well. But great job by St. Teresa on that drive. Again, and still trying to figure out who they are, what they need to do. And Jacarian Jones is a guy you can just hand the ball to and almost get out of his way because he is going to be tough to tackle for anyone. And let's see. It does. No, the Bulldogs oh, are going to kick. So 20 to 17, the Bulldogs trying to make the lead four points. Great view of the kick there and right through the uprights. 21 to 17 now, St. Teresa with the lead. After the touchdown, an extra point, they lead by four with 30 seconds left in the third quarter. We still have another quarter to go, Adam, that's great. It is great. This yeah, is fun. It's going to be down to the wire here tonight. We talked about it in our sorry preview show that uh, this game, you know, last year, 48 to 7. Uh, even the year before when we covered uh, this game on Friday Night Rivals, I think it ended up being 28 to nothing. Uh, that game was a lot closer in the score, but I think you're going to see whoever has the ball last might be winning tonight. And I think you might be right on that. That would not surprise me at all. On a crisp, nice September night. And Illinois was getting trounced, right? So we yeah, don't. We're not, even not worried bring, about them. Bring that up anymore. <laughs> we'll stick with this game here. This is a good one. Thanks to the men and women, the whole Suffolk Friday Night Rivals crew doing a great job. Shout out to them. They're here several hours before the game. They're here after the game, getting everything ready, and they do a great job during the game as well. And there is another Bridge Care Suites kickoff fielded at the 16-yard line. Coming back right side, going wide and down the 30-yard line after the return there by Gavin Houchins, the 6'3 senior. A good return by Houchins. Did a lot of side running, he did, but, but uh, he, a decent return. You're going to have decent starting field position here for Central A&M. Let's see if they can get back in the lead here on this drive. Ball on the 31. And yeah, let's see how the Raiders respond here on offense after the Bulldogs score and he took the lead. First and 10. From their own 31. There's the handoff up the middle. 
Good run that good time first on first down. down. Really good run. Evan Pearsall, the sophomore. He's played well tonight. He has and hasn't got a ton of carries. Again, they had him bottled up pretty early. But he's, he's done well here in the second half. And we're going to go to the fourth quarter with a battle. And three quarters. We are done with three quarters here. And right now we're take a break. Watching Seth Q Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us there. Some of the crew, stay with us. Welcome back to Seth Q Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. We're ready to start the fourth quarter here at Frank M. Lindsay Field at Millican University. Second and three from the 38-4 Central A&M. They trail the Raiders do by four. On second down. Back to throw is Damry. Throws left, tipped. Couldn't hang on to it. Maddox Plain, who had a big catch earlier tonight. Couldn't hang on to it. A lot of zip on that pass. Just he, couldn't hang on to it. Yeah, he had a man open early in the flat, uh, but I don't think he had enough time to set his feet right there. I believe it was Carter Thomas that he had open. Maybe it was Hayden Sams. Uh, had a man open in the flat early, just didn't wasn't ready to throw the football, and then just a little too tall for Maddox playing. You've got a Springfield High Lincoln Railer score? Yep, uh, Springfield High up 22 to 12 over the Lincoln Railers. Again, Lincoln 2 and 0 on the year was hoping to move to 3 and 0, but Springfield High has now extended their lead. And then over across town, Rochester is up 20 to 7 on MacArthur. All right. We're in the fourth quarter. And we've got grabbing some clock time. issues. Clock still running. It shouldn't be running. We have to get in to, you know, this isn't their equipment either, so I'm sure they're learning how to, <laughs> how to run this scoreboard. It's it's not the scoreboard they're used to using sure. uh, back at the home field. So the little things you don't probably think about at home or in the stands, but maybe a different company or different scoreboard that they're they're normally used to using. And Adam, you were on assignment last week. We missed you, but AJ Gers did a great job and. Uh, Coach <laughs> Moreau Forsyth, Coach Joss, Jostis, uh, compared, said his quarterback he compared him a little bit to Patrick Mahomes because of one of the plays he made, and it was a pretty incredible play last yeah. week. Caden Maurer is a kid <laughs> that can, can do a lot of special things. Uh, I did get to tune in a little bit. I was out at my uh, brother-in-law's wedding, 
Uh, but uh, you did get to tune in a little bit Friday night to watch you and AJ. Third and three. Damry gets the high snap, hangs on to it, makes something out of nothing, and gets the. Let's see where they mark him out of bounds. It's going to be first. really close. I think he's going to get it. Let's see. They're already moving the chains. <laughs> How about yep. that? A yep. high snap. It goes up in the air. He catches it and just runs. And it's a brand professional agriculture first down as they do move the chains and ball on the 42-yard line. Great awareness by Drew Damry, not only to get the football and, and get back upfield, but to know where he was at. And he didn't step out of bounds too early, just lowered his shoulder and got another two yards to ensure that he was going to have a first down for the Raiders. From the 42. Damry hands off to Pearsall. Up the middle. Stopped at the 45-yard line. The Bulldog defense. 11 minutes to go in this one. Yeah, again, Noah Sloan right here with the big tackle. He's trying to fire up his, his Bulldog defense. They need a little energy. Again, they've, they've got a lead, got to hold on to it here, but need a little fire in their bellies. Need a little energy here on defense to really shut down this Raider offense. Second and seven now for Central AM. The trail by four. There's the give to Thomas. He's got some room. He sure does. They better get him down the sidelines. Inside the 30. See where he went out of bounds. Might maybe the 25 yard line. That's a brand professional agriculture first down and Carter Thomas had a good night himself. Yeah, he's had a great night with those jet sweeps and screen passes. Good job up front here by Pearsall. He's just leading the way. Didn't get all of them, but got enough to where he could spring uh, Smith down the sideline. 5'9", 155 pounds, and Thomas, he can sorry, move. Yeah, yeah he yes. had some speed. On first down. High snap. Damry keeps it himself. Cuts back left. Get some yardage there. A lot of momentum in that. A&M's picked up the tempo a little bit. Again, I think they're being methodical, but they have picked it up a little bit. I think they sense a little bit of, of St. Teresa going backwards. They want to take advantage of it. Damry's a tough customer himself. Coming off a big game last week. Got to take care of the football right here. On second and five. From the 23. Pearsall. Right side has room. First down and more. Inside the 10. Got a flag thrown late here. Let's see what that's all about. Got a hold on the Raiders. That'll bring it back. Take a look at the replay here that came in. It came very late and it came on the outside of the line of scrimmage. So maybe on number 55, Paul Brown, not exactly sure. Holding, 72. 72, so that was Gerhold who's playing guard right there. Tough call, that's a, that's a big kick in the gut to the Central A&M Raiders. Let's hopefully they respond here on, on second down. So now you've got to go from second and five to second and 15 from the 32. Raiders trail by four. Damry steps up. Got some time. He's, He's going to keep it. Still goes left side. He saw that first down marker, and I think he got it. Great job by Damry, and also great job by Evan Pearsall out in front of him. Pearsall was getting ready to run around and saw Damry had some opening there on the left side. So he just kind of led, it was almost his lead blocker right here, if you see in the top of your screen, gets enough of Jacarian Jones to slow him down and lets Drew Damry get a first down. That's a Brant Professional Agriculture first down. Ball on the 17. High snap, Damry catches it. He's gonna bust it play here and he gets to the 20. Could have been worse. They could have lost the ball. So yeah, you got to take now, care of the football right here. So now second and long for St. 
Central A&M. Talking about Damry, that play before, Adam. Great awareness of the first down marker, and he just got it and got out of bounds. Didn't take an unnecessary hit right there when he doesn't have to. Snap right there. He, Gabe Del Mondo just got to calm down a little bit. You, know, you get fired up in these situations. Got to make sure you, that snaps starts everything. Got to make sure you get those down. Second and long. Keeps it himself, does Damry. Right side. Brought down. Good tackle there by the St. Teresa defense. And that was so Jones. Central A&M was not set. And then you're going to get a horse collar tackle here at the end if you see a replay right there. Is, I'm not sure if they'll even take that penalty because the the offside or the legal motion okay. will happen before that. We have two that. fouls on the play one by each team. Legal motion here. Personal foul. Horse collar here. Penalties offset. So you just repeat second down. So still second and long for the Raiders. Yeah, I wasn't sure with the mo illegal motion penalty if uh, the second one counts, but just almost do it again. Ball on the 20, 8.36 to go in this one. Damry going to throw. Goes to the end zone. Got a man. He caught it. He caught it. Touchdown. Maddox playing. That's an Abraham Lincoln Kepler Airport touchdown. He's had a heck of a night. The catches he's made. You that know, Maddox playing. I talked about him as a guy to watch in our sorry preview show. He's out there at 6'5", and he looked even taller than that with cleats on. Great job by Dan Reed to throw it up to your guy and let him go make a play. He had about probably five, six inches on the defender right there, and he was all over him, but great job by playing to get that one down and, and get in the end zone. Here's the point after attempt, and it is good. So the Raiders regain the lead 24-21. We're going to take a break, but don't go anywhere. We've got a good one here in Decatur. You're watching Seth Q, Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us. Welcome back to SefQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Frank Lim, Lindsey Field, Millican University, Decatur, Illinois. Central A&M, the Raiders, and the Decatur St. Teresa Bulldogs. We thought we'd have a good game, and we do. 24-21, Central A&M just regained the lead. Yeah, a great drive. Had a penalty that set them back. Uh, responded well both actually had multiple penalties that set him back responded well both times Damry throws a beautiful ball up to Maddox Blaine and they take the lead and there's another bridge care sweets kickoff by the Raiders bounces picked up at the 17 yard line Monty Snyder Getting loud on that Central A&M sideline. We can hear them all the way over here in the booth. <laughs> They're fired up. So Bulldogs have the ball. They trail by three. This game may come down, come down to a field goal or the last possession. Yep. The way it's going. Let's see what St. Teresa does here offensively. Yeah, I talked about you've kind of seen three different offensive teams on the field. 
Let's see what they decide to do. They have the most success with that wing T formation and getting it to Jones. I think we're going to see a lot of that on this drive. 8-12 left in the fourth. On first down. There's the handoff. Jones, uh, check that, Snyder. There's Jones. It was Jones. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, it's a, a double handoff is doing what it's intended. You're, we're not yeah. supposed to know who has the ball. <laughs> I do want to give a score update. A final up in Olympia. Athens 14, Olympia 6. So we thought it Ooh. would be a tight game, and it was. Athens moves to 3-0 on the year. Olympia has to come back and welcomes the Class 3A runner-up, Williamsville, to Olympia next week. So... Two tough games back to back in the same one. Second and eight. Hand off. Whoa. How about that for a stop? <laughs> Central AM has responded. They they must have talked about some adjustments to that wing T formation. And they have Matt. come out fired up on this drive. And who was that? Maddox playing number two. Yep. And he just caught the he, he had a few guys. Wrap up Jones and Jones was still moving and, and could have got out, but Plain came up and, and finished that that tackle right there. Great job by the Raiders. Inside of seven minutes, third and nine. Now the deep guys here for Central a &M can't get caught looking in the backfield because then they'll get a ball thrown over their head. And they are going to the air. It looks like. Trying to find somebody open, does, but was he in bounds? Was he in bounds? No, he's saying he was say out no, of bounds. Yep. He's out. Caught it, but out of bounds. So, Jax Harrison with the catch, but it does not count. It's out of Take a look. Ooh, great job. Almost, but great camera work. Great camera work. First foot was out of bounds. Yeah, that he first, tried to drag he, it. He great, caught good the ball in, in great effort. Great effort. Yeah, absolutely. But that first foot was already firmly planted in the light. So, fourth and nine punting situation and boy you need a good punt here you want to push those Raiders back and flag it's thrown I think we got 12 guys on the field for St. Teresa yep 12 guys on the field we called it right you usually do <laughs> I could count so. this time <laughs> I missed it earlier <laughs> So, still a punting situation, obviously. Push the, push the Bulldogs back deeper. Not going the right way for if you're a St. Teresa fan. Because now, if you're, their punter really has to make sure he secures, and now you're going to get a false start <laughs> on the outside. One of their in-man, you're going to move it back another five yards. So now your punter is going to be standing in your own end zone. Noah Sutton. It is a good. Still fourth down. Still fourth down. Yep. So fourth you, and longer. He has to make sure he catches this, and you have to make sure you get a good snap, because that's then snaps one, catching the ball is two, and then kicking it is three. Coach Weekly's telling his his deep guys, hey, just fair catch it. Uh, don't do anything crazy. Play it say, Oh, you what you say? The wrist out of the end zone. That's a safety. How about that? Wow. Central a &M gets the safety. So, and it's, the uh, Bulldogs obviously will still have to get the ball, give the ball back to the Raiders. Just a high snap. High snap oh. right, right through the, the wickets there, the hands. Of Sutton. Tough to handle. So 26-21, and the Raiders will get the ball. 6.34 left. Again, plenty of time if you're a St. Teresa fan. Plenty of time left to get back in this game, tie it up. But that is an unfortunate event right there. And time to check out the Sefkew Smile Cam again. There's Sefkew Smile Cam. Let's see some smile. There you go. A lot of happy people here tonight. Enjoying this weather, enjoying a good football game. Yeah. I'm not sure you'll see a lot of blue, blue and orange happy faces right now but you see a lot of red and red and black happy faces because that was a huge momentum shift right there because <laughs> now a field goal doesn't tie this game up paul it it will go so that, that's a huge obviously play in this game 
And as we said, of course, the Bulldogs will have to give it back, kick it back to the Raiders. And if the Raiders can run some clock, but we'll see. A lot of time, like you said, left. Yeah, and it's I a one score game. I still think time. Central AM needs to either get a field goal or at, at the very least a field goal. I think they need a score for this game to really feel comfortable. Even if you get a good drive here, if I'm Coach Weekly, I'm not going to feel great about trying to keep the St. Teresa offense off the field. They've done a great job so far, but don't even give them a chance if you don't have to. And Carter Thomas fielded the kick. That was a Bridge Care Suite kick once again. 6.32 left in this game. Central A&M, one timeout left, Adam. The Bulldogs, St. Teresa have two. That, that we've talked about a little bit. That could be a factor as well, the way things are going here in the fourth quarter with this yep. game and the score. Got to think about... Uh, if you're Coach Miller, again, you got to get a stop here. You got to get them off on third down. Let them try to punt the ball back to you and try to keep your two timeouts intact. Ball control here, right, for the Raiders. You're only up five, but you do have the ball at your own 40 on first down. There's the give to Thomas. Brought down at the 43 yard line. Nice stop there. By great, the Bulldogs. Great job by Monty Snyder to run down Thomas from behind. Uh, not a lot of guys on the field could probably pull that playoff, but he trails him across the field right here. Does a great and even a great tackle, a textbook tackle. And that ball did come out as, he, as Thomas came down. So, you kids at home, that's how you tackle somebody. Nice job there. So, pick up a three, second and seven for the Raiders. And they don't mind that clock running at all. Damry, a little misdirection there. It goes left side. Don't think he got the first down. I thought the ball might have come loose. It did not. Let's go down to the CASCOM for a CASCOM sideline report. CASCOM keeping you connected. Dante Furco, take it away. St. Teresa down in this game. But when I spoke to Coach Miller this week, I asked him about you know, replacing Mark Ramsey coming off a state championship. And I asked him if he felt pressure heading into this season, especially after an 0-2 start. And he told me he didn't feel pressure to win. He felt pressure to just keep the integrity of this St. Teresa way. And, you know, he talked to me about he, he wasn't too surprised by that retirement. And he said if Ramsey didn't retire, he loved being in, you know, that coordinator role with the Bulldogs. And he was happy maintaining that. But he didn't feel the pressure heading Heading into this season to repeat a state championship or a deep playoff run. He just wanted to do right by the kids. He loves these kids, he told me, being in the gym all summer with them. So like I said, just keeping that integrity of the Bulldog way uh, intact. Back up to you guys. All right. Thank you, Dante. And uh, after the Brant Professional Agriculture first down there on first down, Pearsall, Evan Pearsall with the carry and a lot of pushing on that play. End up with three yards, the Raiders do. So second and seven, four and a half to go. This is a head coach. This is especially an offensive coach, too. This is where you, you want to feel very comfortable. If your team can close out the next four minutes holding on to the football, you feel like you've done something. Damry on the keeper. Gets to the 46. Not much that time. Great job by Jax Harrison for the Bulldog defensively, number 15. Came flying in. Again, another run pass option here for Danry. And the way he came flying in, he just took that second option away and forced him back upfield. Good job by St. Teresa. 3.50 to go, clock running, and no idea, but we're going to have the Golden Rule cleaning player of the game later. And of course, the champions, Sefkew Friday Night Rivals Champions Trophy. But we've got a lot of football left. On third and seven, flag on the play. Heaves it in the air. Does Carter Thomas incomplete? But let's see what the flag was all about before the. I think again, it's going to be an illegal motion play here. Okay. Legal shift, two men moving in motion. Penalties declined, fourth down. Wow. So that's a big penalty. And now you've got a big fourth down. You gonna punt? You gonna go for it, Adam Anderson? 
You're the coach. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to actually, with how this second half is played, I'm going to punt, and I'm going to pin it as deep as possible right here and and make St. Teresa go 80, 90 yards to, to take a lead in this football game. But I, I know Coach Weekly wants to be uh, aggressive, but I think you have to uh, punt right here. I just think it's the, the easiest move to make. So ball is on the 46 of St. Teresa. And the, you got to make sure you get all 11 guys out there. He's got some guys coming on late. This is another one of these those big plays in this game. Good punt. And it takes a Keep greater it bounce. Keep letting it roll. Oh, my. Wow, at the one. It doesn't get much. It can't get much better than that. We'll take a break. Back with more. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Sefkew, Friday Night Rivals. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sefkew Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Fourth quarter action, and we do have a lot of action here. 318 left to go. Central AM with a 26 to 21 lead. And Adam, you talked about putting the Bulldogs back 80, you make them go 80, 90 yards. They got to go, what, 98, 99 yards here for a touchdown. And they need a touchdown with 318 to go on first down, deep in their own territory. Jones trying to break some tackles. He does. Gets to the five. He earned that one. That was tough. Yeah, tough run right there. And again, I, I hope everyone at home went to the bathroom before this drive because uh, I think strap in. Uh, we're going to be these last three minutes are, are going to be a tight one. 2.52, clock running. Second down and four from the six. There's the give to Jones out to the 22 yard line. Grant Professor Agriculture first down to move the change. Clock stops temporarily. St. Teresa's got also has to be cognizant of this clock because you do have two timeouts. Running the football has been what's working. You still have 79, yards, 79 to go. yards to go, and you only have two and 220 to do it. So I'm there kind of needs to be myself. a little bit more sense of urgency. Temp, yeah, sense of urgency, a little up. bit more tempo right here. First and ten goes under center to Slowski. Throws it incomplete. Had a man open. Yeah, he missed Couldn't one right connection. there. Good news for St. Teresa there is that the clock stops. On the completion, but you've got third and long now. Yep, he just left that one behind his receiver. That was number six, Jackson Chapman. A junior had wide open and had a ton of green space in front of him. And Shalowski just left that one behind him. He's going to regret that one, I think, watching it back tomorrow or on Monday. Third and ten. 2.07 to go. Solowski under center. Keeps it. Ball's Fumble. loose. Fumble. Oh, recovered by the AM Raiders. How about that? Gavin Houchins. And that could seal it. Wow. Ball just came loose. 
Gavin Hobson with a big recovery there. Great tackle by, watch this, number 51, Caden Pearsall pops it right out. And ball comes loose, Houchins right there on top of it. Great job by Central A&M. Shalowski had some opening, but again, great tackle. Looks like Pearsall might have got a hurt his hand as he was coming down on that. Hopefully he's okay. What a big play. But Pierce saw that. Wow. Huge play. It, game's not over. St. Teresa still has two timeouts here with two minutes left. We've got another angle, Adam. Great and camera work. Take Let's a look. See here. Boom. Pops stiff it arm. right oh. out. As that stiff arm came, it might have got under his face mask a little bit, but again, great Excellent. job by Pearsall. So 2.02 to go, first and 10, St. Teresa trailing. Raiders with the ball and the lead. Ball on the 24-yard line. Handoff, Bulldogs read it, tried to strip the ball, didn't. Tackle is made at the 25-yard line. Yeah, Bryson Oliver shot right in there. And if I'm Coach Weekly, I'm telling my guys, you just put two hands around it. It doesn't even matter. So, 156, 157, and Adam, you make sure you watch Inside the NFL Tuesday at 7 on CW23, a recap of the exciting action from week one, including previously unseen footage from the sidelines. That's Inside the NFL with Jay Cutler, Tuesdays on CW23. Jay Cutler on Inside the NFL, I never thought Former Bears quarterback. Yeah. New season, new home inside the NFL. Love it. So this is, wow. 156 to go. Second down from the 24, 25 yard line. But the clock is the Bulldogs enemy right now. Yep, they can stop it one more time. Three receivers left for the Raiders. Damry keeps it. He goes that He's way. He's got a lot of room. Oh, look out. He might make it in the end zone. Does he? Yes. Touchdown. That's an Abraham Lincoln Cap Airport touchdown. Drew Damry. And that is probably going to seal it there for the Raiders. They lead it now. 32 to 21 and pending the extra point. What a, wow. gra a great job up front. Great blocking by Central AM. The spring Damry, the senior, the leader for this team, gets in the end zone. Unbelievable confidence there by Central AM on that drive. Lehman hits the goal upright. Nope, no good. The extra point, no good. Still an 11 point lead. So 32-21 now. The Raiders with the lead. Hey, look at this. They had three receivers lined up left side, and that's where Damry went, and he knew what to do with it. Yeah, great job blocking on the outside by the, the Central A&M Raiders. Those, those are the blocks that you don't get talked about enough, but great job. Indeed. So 149 left in this one. 32-21, the Raiders with an 11-point lead. The Bulldogs have one timeout left. And they have to, to two-score game. So, and again, we'll have the player of the game afterwards and the trophy. Seth champion trophy. Almost two minutes left. Crazier things have happened. This game isn't over here for St. Teresa, and that's how you can get it started. You're going to get really good field position right here. And that's a bridge care sweet to kick off. Goes out of bounds. And that's what St. Teresa probably likes, right? Because they'll get, like you said, good field position. They need all the breaks they can get right now. Yep. Now we got to see Shalosky kind of turn it loose here. Senior on the kicking team. 
He's a big kid with a strong arm. He's been a little off tonight. He's got to settle down a little bit. And that comes with just playing more football games. Let's see if they turn it loose here on this drive. You've got to get in the end zone. And hopefully in a hurry. In a hurry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get the two-point conversion. But Lips, first and 10 from the 35. They've got to go to the air. Shalovsky goes right side. The screen pass. It's going to be enough for a first down. Still in bounds. Close to midfield. Good pick up there. They move the chains. It's a brand professional agriculture first down. Just throwing it out to Snyder. Letting him do his thing. Got a lot of speed. Central so A&M can't just play back on their heels. This game is far from over. They have to be playing the type of defense that they played this whole second half. 136. Clock running. Left side drops the ball. The Raiders want to make sure it wasn't a fumble. It was not an incomplete pass and got a player down for the Raiders. Number 51, Caden Pearsall. I think Snyder just kind of took his eyes off that one. And yeah, look at Pearsall there on that replay. Just kind of fell awkwardly. Hopefully he's okay. So 131 left. You see the score, 32-21. Wow. This game has lived up to the expectations, I think, of a lot of people. Been very good game, close game. Big rivalry. And like you said, hopefully Pearsall is okay. And he's up. He's limping, but he's up. He'll be helped off the field to the Raiders sideline. He's got some good plays in this game. Yeah, I'm none bigger <laughs> than the, the forced fumble there a few plays ago. That was huge. So 131 left. Like we said, the Bulldogs one timeout remaining. Ball at midfield. They need to score in a hurry. And then more than likely if they do that, get the onside kickoff and hope for the best. Yep. Another final score of the Central State 8. Springfield High 29. Lincoln 12. So Lincoln Falls to Spring, Springfield High and gets in the win column this year for the first time. Back to throw is Shilovsky. Got Jones right set, set that Snyder. Out of bounds, so clock will stop. Good play there by Snyder to get out of bounds and stop the clock. That was huge. You see the replay, he made the most of that one. And I, I hate to bring this up, but maybe they're back from the dead, but Illinois is just down by 11 right now uh, midway through the fourth quarter. They've fought back. Wow. Let's hope they do come back. So 124, third and two. Need I say a big third down there? Every down is big actually right now if you're St. Teresa. So down by 11. Let's see what they do on third and two. Shalowski from the gun. Hands off to, to Jones. Jones. He's got some room. Look out. He might break it. He does. Look at that. Touchdown. 42 yards with 115 left. It is not over. That's a Abraham Lincoln Capital Airport touchdown. Wow. I told everybody that this game was far from over. There's almost two minutes left to play. St. Teresa has the type of guys on offense that could make get them back into this football game. So if they can get a two-point conversion here, you're just looking at a three-point game. You need, like you said, you need that two-point conversion. This is obviously huge. And the Bulldogs, Max Solowski, if they can convert this, they are back in business. Still need a little help, but they could be right back in it. Solowski lines up under center. Going for the two-point conversion. Fakes it, keeps, gets it to Jones. No. He's in. It's good. Yes, he's in. The conversion is good. Jones with the two-point conversion. Kind of hid behind a he few did. good jerseys there that nobody from Central a &M knew who had the football. Great job by St. Teresa right there. So 32-29. Central a &M with a three-point lead. This will be a huge kickoff. Onside kick, Adam Anderson. Yep. Yeah, this is the craziest play in football right here. The elusive onside kick. Get your hands team out there. If you're 
Central A&M. So the ball has to go 10 yards before any blue jersey can touch it. That's the one thing everybody seems to get caught up on. It, it has to travel 10 yards. But once it travels 10 yards, that's a free live football. Any first one on it gets it. There are so many different ways to play onside kicks, too. <laughs> try to bounce it, you try to do a ground ball, you try to kick it off a guy that maybe isn't paying attention like he should be. There's a, a lot of different ways to play this, and you just never know what you're going to get right here. And let's see what how the Bulldogs He's going to kick it our way. Do it. Down here to left this right side. side. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, his left. So Jacob White, number 73, will do the the kick here. Here we go. We're going to get a fake. Oh, no. He, he turns it. Get on the ball. ball is loose. And the Raiders, that's a bridge there. Care Suites kickoff. And the Raiders got it. The ball did come loose, but not very long. And the Raiders, three of them were right there. So now, one timeout for St. Teresa. That's all they have left. They trail by three, and they have to strip the ball if they get the chance to here. Yeah, you hope for a bad snap or a loose football right here. Uh, but if I'm Central a and I'm just kneeling on the ball. I'm not even going to take a chance with a handoff or anything like that. I'm going to kneel on the football. Here's the replay of the Bridge Care Suites kickoff. What's important right there, especially on onside kicks, is once your guy has it, everybody, all his other teammates should pile on top of him too to make sure nobody can then pull it out. And I think just what you said, Adam, the Raiders will take a knee there, probably take another one. As Drew Damery, who's had a good game himself, takes the knee. Bulldogs stop the clock for the last time tonight. As they are out of timeout with 108 left. What a game. Yeah, what a game. What a game. I knew this game wasn't over when St. Teresa got the football back. They had, they're too good offensively to uh, not put some pressure. Central a and I think, was kind of a little rested, a little back on their heels a little bit, playing more defensively and, and not as aggressive as they have been, and, and that's how St. Teresa got in the end zone. The National Desk, impartial fact-paced journalism with breaking news from the live desk. Choose America's News Now, the National Desk. Weekday mornings at 7 on CW23. Again, we'll have the player of the game coming up. The CEPU Champions Trophy. And flip over and watch Rio Berry on the Friday Night Rivals recap. At 10.15 on ABC. Who's counting? The Raiders will take a knee here. Have to run one more play. Maybe two. Maybe two. One for sure, but maybe two, like you said. They just need to hang on to that ball, and they will have their second victory of the season. They would move to 2-1, and one, and St. Teresa, incredibly, would, would fall to 0-3. And, and and I know a lot of people in the St. Teresa faithful are, are going to look at 0-3 and, and be like, the sky <laughs> is falling, and what do we do? How did we get here? You still have a long season. Granted, your, your back's going to be up against the wall. But it, it's not over. You can still six get five games wins. left. Yeah, sure. Six games left. And that's probably going to do it. Drew Damry has the ball. The Raiders are ready to, ready to celebrate, and why not? The Bulldogs can't stop the clock, and the hugs and high fives and cheering and everything else has started for Central A&M, and a hard-fought, well-earned victory tonight against a, a good St. Teresa Bulldogs team in the players and coaches line up great sportsmanship as always and it's over Central A&M beats Decatur St. Teresa 32 to 29 you know I I know St. Teresa won't want to hear they might be one of the best 0-3 teams in the state of Illinois right now and that doesn't mean much to them uh, but if you're trying to look at, at some bright things they have a lot of great players out there they just got to find their identity and, and what they can be good at and, and they could still make a big postseason run they have the guys to do it and here's a look at the fourth quarter scoring summary you see brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors Raiders outscored the Bulldogs 15-8 in that critical fourth quarter, Central A&M wins it 32-29. We will...
take a break. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Welcome back to SEPQ Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20. Central AM, the Raiders have just defeated the Decatur St. Teresa Bulldogs 32 to 29. And we have tonight's player of the game, which brought to you by Golden Rule Cleaning. It is none other than number 11 quarterback for the Central AM Raiders, Drew Damry. Orchestrated this offense with precision here tonight. Had a beautiful pass late in the game to Matt explain to take the lead and then put it on ice with the house call from about 20 yards out to seal the victory for the Raiders. And there you see some of Drew Damery's highlights from tonight. He did. He had a really good game. Did a, you could see his, his composure, his experience helped. Made some big, big plays with his legs and through the air. But look at that. Some key yeah, runs some tonight. Key third down runs where he got a first down. Did a great job just controlling the game and uh, really excelled here to, to help the Raiders to a victory. And Drew Damery is tonight's Golden Rule Cleaning Player of the Game. Well deserved. Congratulations to Drew Damery. As the Raiders led the Raiders to their second win of the season. Look at this run here. Yeah. Really good. Knew right where the first down marker was. And then just threw this beautiful ball to plane. And uh, that really kind of set the tone in the second half. Let's go down to Dante. What do you have, Dante? I'm here with the winning team of tonight's Friday Night Rivals, Central A&M. Here, Coach Weekly. Coach, talk to me about what you see from your guys tonight and tonight's win. Well, like we said, they had to compete for 48 minutes. Uh, be willing to tackle, stick their nose in there. And they did that. Uh, very proud of their effort. I thought they played super hard. I told them at the end there, hey, uh, you know, you win a lot of games with guts, and uh, we had guys show up, uh, compete in different positions. Uh, we had some injuries. Guys uh, laid it all out there, and uh, super proud of my team. I know it's just another game on your schedule, but what does it mean to beat a team like St. Teresa? It's always nice. <laughs> Leave it at that? <laughs> yep. Awesome. And then we'll also name our golden rule player of the game, quarterback Drew Damry. Congratulations on a great game. What did you see from your guys tonight? Uh, I gotta go with what coach. I saw a lot of heart. Uh, they played really hard until the very end. Awesome. And what does it mean to you to take home a uh, player of the game award? Uh, it means a lot, but I definitely could have done it well with my head coach and all these guys behind me. Awesome. Well, I'll hand you this, and then we'll also hand our SEFQ Friday Night Rivals trophy to the winning team, Central A&M. Yeah! All right. Yes, that's right. 
Central A&M deserves that Sepkew Champions Trophy as they get the they get it from Dante Furco. Well deserved, hard fought game, and they are the Sepkew Champions tonight. Yeah, and the Golden Rule Player of the Game, Drew Damry, had a had a great game here tonight for the Raiders. All right, and next week, Sepkew Friday Night Rivals, presented by News Channel 20, brings you Week Four. We'll be in Memorial Stadium as the Springfield High Senators take on the Glenwood Titans. That's next Friday night, starting at 7, right here on CW23. Well, that's going to, for Adam Anderson and Dante Furco. Adam, I think that's going to do it for us. Yeah, great game we expected. It was everything we lived up to. Congratulations to Central A&M on a huge victory here on Friday Night Rivals. Great game. Congrats to Central A&M and St. Teresa playing a tough game. Thanks to the Sepkew Friday Night Rivals crew, the men and women. Did a great job as always, and I know you have some work to do after this game to tear everything down. We appreciate your efforts. At least the weather's good. Adam, week four next week. It'll I'll be fun. See you Memorial Stadium. Memorial State. We are going to have a game. Yeah, we're going to have a game. Unlike I'm not one, leaving right? until there's a game played, so we're <laughs> having a game. Looking forward to it. A Central State 8 matchup. The Springfield High Senator, the Chatham Glenwood Titans. It will be a good one. That's it. Good night from Decatur. Thanks, everybody.